Welcome to the Red Bull Ring in Spielberg. In this world, it's all about fine lines. The line between success and failure. First place and last. And with this riding on it, you've got to leave it all on the line. Welcome to the fifth race of season six, live on Twitch. It's time once again for us to uh, sit back, relax, and watch these all-stars. And what a venue it is to race at. The hills are alive with the sound of Porsches as we're racing around the Red Bull ring here in Spielberg, Austria. My name is Paul Smith. Alongside me, as always, is, uh, it's Arjuna Kankapati. And Arjuna, um, the all-stars will start us off, as always, traditionally, the last round with a 992 Cup car. Yeah, and you know, these drivers will be going on over to the bigger GZ3 machine. They'll have the addition of anti-lock brakes and traction control. It's the last opportunity for us to pull. Really torture them by talking to them while they've got to try and monitor these machines about what is, let's be honest, a very technical track. Yeah, it certainly is. It's also got quite a bit of pace around it as well. As I say, this is the last round with the cup car here at the Red Bull Ring. We had uh, Watkins Glen last time out two weeks ago. Imola and then the championship finale at Monza uh, heading your way with the 911 GT3R. So uh, that is what we've got to look forward to here coming up in this series. A quick look at how things will go today. So the drivers are currently in open qualifying here and then sprint race, 15 minutes, a full grid inversion of the race results from the sprint race. And then the main race, 25 minutes in length for you here today. So uh, the All-Stars, uh, we've got some uh, some good drivers that have, uh, have been competing all season. As we look at this track, what are some of the challenges here around here, Arjuna? We race at elevation, which let's take that out of equation because we're not talking about different powered cars and engine uh, capacities that you have to deal with. The thing that that really brings into mind, though, is the difference between the high and the low. Really understanding how all the elevation change is going to play with this car that's going to float around at times through some of those crests. Let's not forget that last time we came here, Casey Kerwin grabbed the win in the sprint race, unable to carve his way through the field in the main race. While there are long straights, ish and passing opportunities ball if you get stuck behind and you start to lose time it's not one of those tracks where you're going to dice and slice your way on forward yeah it's certainly a, a tricky track to work your way through Casey Kerwin well he's currently leading qualifying as things stand right now and we have got a, a, a guest driver here as well this week Arjuna and that is in the name of uh, Bathurst 12 hours winner Ian Chan Guvan uh, a former Porsche Tag Heuer eSports Super Cup competitor. He was in it in 2021 and 2022, although he only completed half of the season in 2022. But he is a race winner in that series. He could be a challenger for Casey, couldn't he? Uh, so I'm guessing, by the way, some of the drivers, some of our other All-Stars are going to complain that not only do they have to try and fight Casey, now they've got to try and fight a former Porsche, All uh, Porsche Super Cup rather, race winner. You know, Ian Chen Gubin is you know, part of Kawan, the sim sport, kind of eSport, and we've seen him and Lauren Heinrich a lot actually racing in the virtual world together. They raced in DTM last year in Porsche GT3 machines. It's great to have Ian Chan over here joining us after his success down at Mount Panorama. Of course, all as Lauren Heinrich, teammate in DTM last year, is racing over in the 12 hours of Sebring with AO Racing in a Porsche. So we wish him the best of luck. But Guven oh. to the top, and what a time it was by two tenths. Yeah, and now with that timer on the top left corner of his screen, want that strike zero. The drivers will not be able to complete their lap time. So uh, Guvan will not be able to improve his time. Quirk coming towards the end of his lap. What can he do in all of this? Because he's in fifth place right now. Three and a half tenths off of uh, Guvan. As it comes through that penultimate corner. Very easy to run wide. And uh, Arjuna, I'm, I'm going to mention it. Track limits are going to be quite the talking point here this week. 
the arbiter of track limits, of course, had to have his say. And uh, I guess the other thing to think in qualifying in particular, right, both for these All-Stars, but more for the Super Cup is it's so easy to invalidate a lap. And Paul, in the Super Cup, you get one attempt at that lap as well. So it's going to be a lot of pressure on these drivers to really deliver. It certainly is. We're uh, getting ready for the start of this one. The drivers have uh, got across the line. They have finished their laps. The clock strikes zero. And of course, if you do want to keep up to date with everything going on here in the Porsche Takara Esports Super Cup, check out iRacing.com forward slash PESC for details about the uh, champ Pro Championship and also the All-Stars. And speaking of All-Stars, it's an All-Star front row because Ian Chan Guvan and Casey Kerwin sharing that front row with the Popa Lopez and Swally Almeida on row number two. Quirk and Samsoy are on row number three. Row number four for Tony Kanan, who's back this week, and alongside him is Daniel Gray. Stradi and Kenny 500 share row number five with row six of Basic Holly and Dan Suzuki. Big grid here because Grizzle and Borja Zaza then alongside each other in row seven. Row eight for Matt Malone and Storm Molina. And row 46, rounding out our 17 car grid. No Emery here today. So uh, we've got one less Australian on the grid, but Daniel Gray, I'm sure, will be wanting to uh, represent Australia very well out there, Arjuna. Yeah, but he's got some work to do, and I think Guven and Curran, you've got to assume they may end up trying to break away. Only a 15-minute sprint race. They may work together, try not to fight, and see what gap they can build. Yeah, absolutely. So the drivers get themselves to the grid. We are all set then for the sprint race in the All-Stars. 15 minutes of action coming up for you right now at the Red Bull Ring. And we are away. And what a smooth start from pole position for Guvan. Perfect start. We've got cars running wide. Grizzle not having the greatest of starts on the start. Finish straight and already contact. And that's Quirk around. Quirk is off into the runoff. He's dropped down to the back of the field. But as they go up towards through turn two, the sweeping left hander up to the hairpin. Here it is. Casey Kerwin looking to make some moves. And Guvan very early on making a defensive move and look at that down the inside thank you very much to Pulpa Lopez you don't need to ask him twice Almeida got into the back of Kerwin there was a bit of contact and deep into the corner went the 77 they were four wide behind into the breaking zone of turn three that was remarkable they all got it stopped in time but down the hill now into Schlossgall it's so easy on occasion to lock the inside front to go deep but somehow the Pulpa Lopez avoids running off into the path of Almeida gonna block the run to try and get into this double left-hander and now Almeida goes out wide with the defensive move this all as Iron Chan Guven runs away in the front yeah Guven's uh, already uh, pulling out a gap and he's saying see you later folks I'm off and uh, well he wants a nice easy day of it by the looks of things here but it is Guven from Popo Lopez from Casey Kerwin then Soli Almeida with Samsoy Daniel Gray in six ahead of Kenny 500 Basic uh, Dan Suzuki and Basic Holly, and look at this. TK is involved in all of this. Oh, where did that car come from? Oh my goodness, Basic Holly from out of nowhere, almost a uh, an RKO on that one. Well, our track limits. Uh, we'll have to go and ask him maybe at some point. Don't go three wide up to turn one. It's a corner that maybe has one racing line at the best of times. Borja Zazo on the outside's got to be careful because if you're squeezed off, you can get into trouble. But if you pinch the car down low, around you go, Stradi to the back. And I mean, this is crazy, Paul. You talked that maybe we wouldn't see a lot of fighting. It was hard to pass, but it's easy to brawl. I think that's what we're seeing. Yeah, it's certainly easy to give it a little bit of a hip and a shoulder and... Uh try and force your way through Matt Malone's up a place and all that Grizzle has spun off this tire smoke in the background for Grizzle so he's not had the best of starts to this race and Love 46 after starting at the very back of the grid is challenging for a top 10 spot here we are then on board Daniel Gray the Australian and just look at the focus on his face right now and Look at how smooth he's being, Arjuna, with those steering inputs. They're all on this fixed setup as well, so they're not really dialing it in for their own comfort. They're just dealing with what they've been given. There's no rear wing changes. They're all going to be 
sort of constrained on their top end performance and how much draft they're going to be able to use and therefore it's all about controlling the tires underneath you and you just watch in front and sometimes where they take the liberties with those track limits some of these times when you go beyond the white line you're not always picking up those incident points it's all about understanding those little details now not sure why but tony canard has just come down to pit lane he certainly has yeah, that's that's an odd one. I wonder if he uh, maybe he's got a black, black flag. He's got a black flag. Yes, he has. So uh, jump start, TK, uh, possibly, possibly a jump start uh, in all of that. But yeah, he's having to serve a black flag. So um, it does mean that because of him uh, being at the back there, the start of the, uh, the second race, the main race, he'll be uh, right there at the front. So it's not the end of the day for him yeah and i thought watching the start no one had really done anything bad so i'm quite surprised to see anyone got a black flag so maybe there was something else amiss maybe not, slow down penalty not serving in time i was gonna say slow down but you know you don't really expect slowdowns except maybe at like turn one here for going absolutely wide and uh i don't think tk would have done that on the opening lap so it wouldn't have been a terribly bad slowdown penalty in which case unfortunately TK may just have uh, dug his own grave. Well, we carry on with Daniel Gray, sixth place, Sampsoid in front of him. And as they go through towards the uh, penultimate corner, you can see how that group of the front four have pulled away. Well, I say the front four. Uh, second through to fourth have pulled away from these two. And Changuvan is just pulling away even more. 1.4 seconds ahead of these three that you're seeing right now. The Popa Lopez, Casey Kerwin, Solia Almeida, all out there on track. Now remember that Guvan is just basically uh, here as a guest. He's not fighting for any sort of championship. Whereas the Pulpa Lopez, Casey Kerwin, Swally Almeida, they all are. As Love 46 and Grizzle now have a black flag each. So th that's quite interesting. Uh, don't think it would be for incident points. So again, it goes back to slowdowns potentially. Uh, uh, I, uh, I could tell you for every eight incidents, it's a drive through penalty. Okay. If it's every eight, then with the amount of contact that we've been seeing and how aggressive track limits can be here, uh, we may see a few more drive through penalties and, and sooner rather than later. That explains TK as well, because I'm pretty sure he probably picked up probably eight incident points from the start because he was involved in all of the shenanigans. So especially at the front, they'll have having to be keep quite tight with that. I mean, look how much pressure Casey Cohen's putting the Pulpo Lopez under. This is where it's so easy to make those mistakes and to run wide. As, uh, yeah, those drivers will carry on. And uh, yes, Almeida's just not quite hanging on to Kerwin and the Pulpa Lopez here, although he is still in that draft, he's still in that slipstream. So they come through, so um, yeah, the driver's now heading across the line and starts another lap in the books here. And eight and a half minutes remaining in this race, and it's still really close here. Fourth of the second and third step of the podium. As we're coming through this sweeping section, through turn two, and then into three, and there's the move from Casey Kerwin to the inside. And Kerwin is going to get that job done, or is he? Because the Pumpa Lopez can get on the power on the outside, but no, he's staying out wide there, and that's allowed Kerwin to go through. And now, can Almeida follow Pumpa Lopez in a very difficult spot, really trying to open up the corner, but you don't really want to compromise it here. I mean, how many times have we seen drivers on the outside, uh, outside being pushed off into the gravel? Just ask Alex Albon. He'll tell you all about what losing an F1 podium feels in all of that. Just to quickly clarify, by the way, uh, it's 20 uh, incident points for the initial drive-through penalty, and then every eight after that is what the uh, race control officials have said. As uh, we carry on then, and uh, through we go, and uh, still on board with the Pulpa Lopez here. Head down, looking forward. And, uh, wow, he's going to uh, be uh, really focused on what's going on here uh, in front of him because Casey Kerwin now feeling the need to go defensive. 
and uh, that's well i mean he's trying to break the slipstream in nothing else is casey but that's a, a little bit aggressive defensive because really there was no move going on there yeah, but they've lost the draft to Vine Chen Guven, right? So at this point, they recognize there is no way that they're fighting for the lead. It's just second, third, and fourth. And with Curran missing a, a few rounds of the championship, it's remarkable still to know that he's got a quite healthy championship lead over the, uh, the Paul Paul Lopez, who does sit second in points. Uh, Sueli Almeida has missed a few more rounds, of course, juggling back and forth uh, between some of his real-world obligations and joining us here as an all-star. He's down in 11, so we know he's got the speed but Paul, we just haven't, because he's not been in the in every round of the championship, haven't seen him rack up the points to be right where he is on track. Yeah, so uh, we carry on then. So, uh, well, Ayan Changuvan is running away and has decided that tonight it's just time to have a, a nice Saturday afternoon drive. Quirk is on a bit of a recovery drive here after... Uh, after his start here and he's got Matt Malone there as well and Arjuna we do have Matt Malone and basically in the room hey as, guys as Hello. ever able to come and distract you guys how much fun are you having how close to the incident threshold are you guys oh Ooh. I only got 2x I'm good I'm ready yeah. to punch someone <laughs> <laughs> I'm on free so I'm doing okay I'm on I'm free at the moment but you know a, a cheeky little 4x from nowhere could really put us in trouble so I'm trying to be a very very good boy and just sitting back hey. here waiting for the carnage hey remember when I passed you Ali on the outside that was pretty cool yeah yeah no, I think it's that sim racing gear that you got that made you so quick around the corner there <laughs> yeah, go to Ace Attack, use promo Matt Malone, get 5% off your order. It's the wrong one! <laughs> well, I, I think, M Matt, you've got to be a little bit more worried that you've got Quirk directly behind you. It's the final yeah. race in these 992 Cup cars. I mean, here at the Red Bull Ring, how much of a challenge is it to get the most out of this car? Well, it's, it's one of those cars where you do have to have discipline. Slow in, fast out has never been more true with a car like this. And easy on the throttle and the brakes is a whole nother challenge but yeah it's tough especially when you got cork right behind you you know he's better than you <laughs> <laughs> hi buddy oh oh no he's here hey don't <laughs> ask me dude i'm trying to do well in the interview and in the race <laughs> well, what happened earlier cork when you spun out what happened did someone uh, hit you i was checking up for t1 i had like three cars in front of me and i couldn't go wide and then I had to take the inside line I think um old tires Sam and stuff, Soid, well no I got hit I don't think Sam oh. Soid was expecting it oh. so but what you can expect is a pass real soon how many X you got <laughs> don't worry about it okay <laughs> well, I only got two so wait oh, for you the two? oh yeah dang it <laughs> I, I like, Matt, how you joined us for one round on commentary last uh, last time out at Le Mans, whatever it was, and suddenly you asked the question, you stole it right out of my mouth. So look at you, commentator, you can you can come and replace us anytime you want, but uh, Cork, come on, you got to start putting the pressure on here. You've got only four minutes left to go. Yeah, there's not uh, there's not a lot of time, um, and I'm, I'm hurting on incident points. Oh, no, I just got another. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I, you know, I might just have to take him with me. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Please don't use my draft. That's very uh, rude of you. Well, right, guys, court. we'll let you go to hopefully not have a drive through penalty. But Quirk, Malone, don't worry. You've got some cars closing from behind. Paul, always great to be able to interrupt them and add to their incident count. <laughs> yeah, we're out of a job soon. Um, as they carry on then through the uh, the race, and it's still pretty close up for second, third, and fourth because uh, Papa Lopez is uh, at the back. So uh, that means that uh, it's going to be a push then for him to try and get onto those podium spots. And uh, well, right now, Guvan at the front. Uh, uh, we've barely we've barely shown him he's been that far away from the rest of the field but it shows uh, Porsche Takari Sport Super Cup race winner uh, bring him into the All-Stars and it's uh, it's almost like uh, kicking a ball into an open goal so I think what we need to do is drag him in with us for the entire next race because that might be the only way Paul that we don't see the, the full invert that's coming if you're not if you're joining us for the first time in this Porsche All-Stars. Sprint race, the results from this, fully inverted, set the grid for the main race, 25 minutes that's coming up ahead. So Guven's going to be starting from the back and with some work to do. 
And look who might be starting up towards the front. A certain Tony Kanan that will be hoping to try and run away as he continues to race more and more of these Porsches in the real and virtual worlds. Yeah, absolutely. Just for your information, whilst we're going up and over the top of uh, the hill here, Casey Kerwin came into this round uh, with a big lead, 142 points over 108, and that's over the Popa Lopez. There are drop scores in this in this series, though, aren't there, Arjuna? So if you do miss a round like Casey did earlier on, it's not the end of the world for his championship. Yes, but I think we're gonna we're gonna appeal to Porsche to, to amend the rule book so Casey's yeah. not allowed to drop rounds. Everyone else is allowed to drop any round that's not a, a point score. Uh, just to make it a little bit more fair and equal. I will say though, we've talked in the past, right, about how Casey is very capable if he had uh, if he if he not had the time, if he committed more time to racing this car regularly, he would be in the World Championship. I don't think we have a doubt about that. Look at how Almeida and the Fulpa Lopez are keep keeping him honest, though. The level we have here in this All-Stars polls, year on year, has just continued to rise. Oh, absolutely. As uh, the white flag is out, we're on to the final lap of the race here in the uh, or Porsche Tag Heuer Esports All-Stars. It is Ian Changuvan, 4.2 seconds ahead of these three cars that you're seeing on screen right now. Casey Kerwin from Swale Armida from the Pulpa Lopez. And uh, well, it's the last lap. It's the last opportunity to try and make a move. And Almeida is having a look, but not really close enough to make any move stick. But this is an opportunity now, perhaps, for the Pulpa Lopez to try and put some pressure on as well. Now, none of them necessarily got the runs out of turn three that they wanted. Might see Almeida have a chance out of this corner to set something up by just compromising Kerwin. He puts himself in the position. Kerwin on the brakes just for a moment there to give himself a little bit more rotation. They'll be side by side into this middle sector and Almeida's trying to squeeze. Absolutely neck and neck. Fantastic stuff from these two. The clock strikes zero through the left and then the right it's right handers all the way to the end of this one but Kerwin's just staying ahead here comes the Pulpa Lopez then to try and make a move but it's going to be difficult to make that around the outside meanwhile at the front Ian Changuvan he's five seconds clear of this he comes out the final corner and he's a race winner in the all-stars but second place is going to be Casey Kerwin. Who's going to be third as we reach the line? It's going to be Swelly Almeida, who just pips the Pulpa Lopez to that third place. The rest of your field coming through right now. Um, there was a bit of, bit of uh, rubbing, a bit of door panels being bashed in that first race, Arjuna. But uh, still, plenty of action, especially in that mid pack. Yeah, I think it's going to be intriguing how that all plays out in that second race, right? If they were that uh, heated through turn one on lap one with the grid being set by qualifying now with the full invert, some drivers maybe think they're out of position. Some other drivers have some work to do. I think turn one, lap one, going to be even more interesting this time around. I think we're going to see a great drive from Ian Changuvan coming through the field here. I think that's going to be one to watch as he is the race winner, the driver from Turkey ahead of Casey Kerwin, Almeida and the Popa Lopez with Kenny 500, Daniel Gray, Sampsoid, Dan Suzuki, Paul Shazaza and Matt Malone rounding out the top 10. Quick basic colleague, Storm Molina in 13th ahead of Stradi, Love 46 and Tony Kanan in 16th with Grizzle one lap down. And, uh, joining us for a little bit of a chat, Arjuna. Uh, take it away, we'll Love 46. And for the final time in this 992 Cup car, I Love 46, we're gonna go racing. How have you enjoyed it so far? Talk us through that first race and you having to come down and unfortunately serve a drive-through penalty. Yeah, that's really unfortunate that uh, this issue happened with server, but uh, that's okay, we had fun. Uh, really enjoying driving the Porsche Cup, even my uh, Red Bull ring, not my favorite track. Uh, but this car is absolutely wonderful. I love to drive it. And so after this, of course, the GT3 machine for the final two rounds. So you get ABS traction control. Which one do you prefer? I always ask drivers this. Do you prefer the, 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 the big GT3 car or the, the cup car with less driver aids, but maybe a little less overall performance? My heart was Porsche cup car. <laughs> 
Uh, I don't think we blame you. Uh, let's talk about Red Bull Ring then, because Paul and I, we were kind of discussing that it can be difficult to pass here, but we saw a lot of side by side. How easy is it to set moves up here around this track? I think it's uh, quite good for overtakes due to good uh, draft on track. Um, and yeah, that, that's why we can fight with each other here. Uh, but sometimes it can be a bit hard to overtake uh, because you just, uh, maybe you're going to lose the line or you're going to lose break-in or something. Um, so many things can happen on this track and that can uh, mess up the fight on this track. Uh, but overall, I think that uh, this track is really good with, for overtakes and with draft with everything, which you're getting. Well, best of luck for the main race. You'll be sitting up toward the front with the full invert, and hopefully things go a little bit cleaner. Thank you so much. Always great to hear from the 46 there. And, uh, well, if you want to check out the new iRacing season, season two, well... We get the iRacing weather system in action here. Uh, check out that QR code, scan the QR code, and it'll take you to all the details about the new content, not just the weather, but also some of the new vehicles here on iRacing as well. And join the on-track action. And do you know what, Arjuna? Uh, I've been so excited about this uh, new season. I've even jumped into the GT Porsche GT3 car. <laughs> Look at you, branching out from your touring cars. I unfortunately haven't had too much time to play around with the rain, but I did do a bit of driving last night, both in the Porsche GTP and in the Porsche GT3 around Sebring to prepare for next week's iRacing 12 Hours of Sebring, which they've released the forecast, 96% chance of rain. So it's going to be a rainy edition of that race on the iRacing Esports Network. And it's going to be a lot of fun, Paul. I mean, it's all about the changing though of the conditions, right? It's not just the wet rain that's so exciting, right? It's the unpredictability. When do you go yeah. to the wet tires? When do you stick on the dries? Because there could be a shower that only start, uh, stays for 10 or 15 minutes and it could be worth sticking on those dry compounds. Yeah, that iRacing Sebring 12-hour special event next weekend uh, where you can drive a Porsche GT3. I mean, I don't know why you'd want to drive any other GT3s. Or you could even drive the GTP as well, the 963 GTP uh, around Sebring International Race. Where it certainly is going to be a thrilling 12-hour race and uh, I can't wait. Unfortunately, I'm not commentating on it. I'm a bit busy that day, so but I'll be keeping an eye on watching it. I'm sure our junior will uh, keep me up to date with everything. But certainly that is one not to miss uh, next time out next week. And that will be available on the iRacing Twitch channel. Here we have a look at the format then of these all-star races. Arjuna, Ayacheng Guvan, race winner in the sprint race. It's now a full inverted grid for the main race. I think we're going to be looking at uh, somebody on a hard charge through that field. The question really is going to be how efficiently can he slice and dice his way through? And this is where I think his DTM experience is going to come in handy. He's had plenty of experience in this car in real and virtual competition. But DTM, big pack racing, having to work your way through. Yes, experience in the Porsche Tag Car Esports Super Cup will help. But I think that's going to really see him work forward. And uh, former race winner in the Super Cup, he's now a race winner in the All-Stars too. Absolutely. Check it out, iRacing.com forward slash PESC for all the details about the All-Stars and also about the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup. So make sure you check that out for all the championship standings, for the drivers, the schedule, everything that you need to know. Uh, go and check it out there. iRacing.com forward slash PESC. But we are ready for the start of the main race now. And it is Grizzle and Tony Canaan on the front row with Love 46 and Straddy row number two. Storm Molina and basically third row of the grid. Quirk and Matt Malone then on row number four with Borja Zazo and Dan Suzuki. Sam Soid and Daniel Gray on row number six. Seventh row of Kenny 500 and the Popa Lopez, Swellia Almeida and Casey Kerwin, and then all the way back on row number nine, it's Ian Changovan. Well, we are all set and we are green flag racing here at the Red Bull Ring here in the main race of the All Stars. And it's a good clean start. They're going four wide. Further back, move for the lead from Tony Kanan. It's not quite worked out for him, though. Grizzle. He's at the front of the field as there's a few cars heading wide out of the first corner. 
heading uphill now towards turn number three. This is a great opportunity to make some moves and we're going three wide into here. Strani on the inside, basically in the middle and contact for Love 46. Oh my goodness. And the track that she is, she absolutely loves, it's just gone from bad to worse. And unfortunately, I think Basicoli is going to take most of the blame there for locking the brakes and maybe slightly causing the chain reaction. Somehow, by the way, Ayn Chan Gubin, 17th to 9th, because he's just got past Tormelina, who's, by the way, just seeing that livery now. What a great uh, paint job that is on the Porsche 992 Cup car. Gubin's going for the lead and charging his way forward quickly. Casey Kerwin still back in 13th, where Almeida... Uh, is the Pulpa Lopez though has worked forward with Gubin as well. Yeah, so already moving forward then, as you say, seventh for the Pulpa Lopez, ninth for Iron Chan Gubin. We've got moves being made a little bit back there. I think down Suzuki and Basic Ollie were looking at each other. And uh, well, through the end of the first lap, there's, there's the view of Iron Chan Gubin's rig. And, uh, well, he's there somewhere. It's a very wide angle, is that shot. But he's looking. He's going to maybe... No, he's backing out of the move into turn number one. And Paul Giazzo, one of the smartest dressed drivers in all of sim racing, is going to have to be the Minister of Defence here. But I think he's got his work cut out for him. Yeah, Spanish Minister of Defence oh. not going to do much as they go three wide in front of him. The Pulpo Lopez trying to go up the inside and grab two for one. Battle for the lease. He's TK trying to get past Grizzle as well. I mean, Paul, you slightly set the tone by trying to say you can't pass at the Red Bull Ring. Everyone wants to prove you wrong. TK still alongside, but Grizzle has still got half the car in front down into the braking zone. Excuse it, by the way. Two by two into Schloschgold. They're three wide behind as well. Ah, oh, this is great stuff, fantastic, and this is why we have full inverted. Ah, uh, no, not again. In this one, as uh, there's uh, Sam Soid has had issues, and meanwhile, Arjuna, we get to speak to, I think we should speak to Grizzle first, to be fair. I'll oh, start boy. with Grizzle, poor TK has got to listen to us, but first race didn't go great, but it gave you the spot to lead from the front. Grizzle, how much stress are you feeling right now? A lot, my heart rate is about to flatline. Uh, how, how are you enjoying this car, though, in particular? Lack of ABS and traction control at a track like this where track limits are so generous? Um, to be desired. <laughs> it's, uh, it's definitely not my strongest car in this car, but um, I'm trying my best here, you know? <laughs> I've got to interrupt you now, TK, at least for a few corners. You're leading, but now you've got Quirk trying to come to second. Are you scared that you've got him behind you now? No, I'm not, but... Uh... Obviously, you guys come talk to me every time he's close to me. So what's going to happen is he's going to pass me and make fun of him and I'm going to crash. So that's pretty much what's going to happen. Uh, who's, who's with us now, by the way? Hi, guys. How's it going, Cork? How's it going, buddy? Every time. Every time. Every time. Hi. Well, Cork, just go. <laughs> Uh, Quirk, we're disturbing you once again. How's it feel? Is, uh, I mean, you're used to talking while racing. Uh, is yeah. it normal for you at this point? Uh, it's, it's normal to pass TK. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I, I, I hope people know how much fun we're all having because uh, Paul and myself are cackling behind the scenes and hoping that you guys just continue putting on a show. Uh, Quirk, one more question for you. Rear view yeah. mirror filled with the sight of about 15 cars right now. Is that a scary proposition? I, I'm sorry, can you say again? 15 cars behind you, you scared? Oh, no, no, not at all. Because um, I think TK will hold them up. <laughs> uh, poor TK. Uh, TK, a quick question, and then I think we'll let you yeah. go. How distracting is it having us versus an engineer come and talk to you mid-corner and try and tell you something about strategy? Well, you, 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 I, you guys win by far, I have to say. <laughs> That's the first time <laughs> I've ever been better than real motorsport. Thank you, TK. You know, because I can't tell my engineers to shut up. I can't tell you guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you could try, but poor producer might not move you out. Uh, no, I think we'll oh, let you guys, guys thank go. You. Thank uh, you. Thank you for being such good sports as ever, and we'll leave them, Paul, in a yeah. fight for the lead as well.
Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I want to see TK making some moves here. It should be good to see. Uh, but um, uh, I, I mean, it's not the first time I've ever been told to shut up by somebody. But there you go. Um, as we go through up over the top of the hill and plunge downhill towards turn number four. It's a nine turn cor course is this. So it's not the longest track and Dan Suzuki is facing the wrong way. Oh my goodness, Paul Gisazzo is involved in that one. I think Tolly Almeida uh, was perhaps involved in that one as well. Oh my goodness, it's not going right for a few of our drivers here in this one. And so you carry on through. Paul Gisazzo in ninth. He wasn't able to hold up a defence against Ai Chan Guvan in the end because the Pulpa Lopez and Guvan are now in fourth and fifth places. Uh, where's Casey? Casey's all the way down in 11th place. He's not working his way through. He got tangled up, Paul, in what we just saw. He was out into the gravel, nowhere to run, and so he's lost a bunch of ground as a result of that. And, you know, uh, Guven, the Popo Lopez, I kind of wanted to ask Quirk and TK, are you feeling the pressure knowing they're going to be closing on you? Uh, I think it was all implied, though, uh, and, I, I, and I think they realize that they've got a very fast driver closing on them quickly. In terms of championship, though, this keeps it a little bit more interesting. Hello. So, which, hello, we're joined by Swelio Almeida along with Casey Curry. Both of you guys just got involved in an incident. Swelio, talk us through it down there in ninth spot. What's happening in all of this fighting? Oh, well, that was an unavoidable one. I, it was so close that like, I tried to move around with a little bit of trail braking, but I, I started locking up. I was very unlucky, uh, but so far, so good. The racing has been amazing. Uh, last race was amazing with Casey. Very, Sorry, very good defending there. <laughs> no, good, man. Casey, why did he drive into the back of Swellio? Come on. Nah, just, you know, just the NASCAR in me couldn't help it. Oh, we're top three wide now. Yeah, right. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, well, uh, Swellio, a little bit of contact. It happens. It's close racing. I was in the white line in my defense. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, Borja goes around. Swellio, you've been jumping a lot back and forth, real racing, virtual racing. Uh, how's it been for you getting to grips with that? Especially, I know, you're quite excited with this weather system. Get oh, a little, yes. bit more, little bit more repetition here on the sim. Absolutely, yes. So I was, you know, my biggest weakness in real life right now is rain. So there is no better timing. For me, it's amazing to just understand a little bit more how it works, especially when it's a changing condition, when you have to consistently assess the grip. That's, that's my nightmare in real life. And that's the best opportunity with iRacing right now to, to practice a little bit of that. So I'm at least you know, more prepared when I get into a real situation like that. Love to hear that. Uh, for the people that don't know, you've been racing some radicals in the real world, right? Yeah, exactly. It's been a dream. <laughs> Can, there's no other word for that. I'm flying around to, uh, the, uh, around the, the American racetracks and, and testing a lot. And, you know, like all the knowledge that we've been using and making setups and everything, you feel it in real life. You know, it's, it's real physics, it's real air pushing your real wing. It's crazy. It's very, 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 you know, difficult to believe. But I'm trying to, you know, make the best out of it because it's very expensive. <laughs> Casey, quick question for you. Ayn Chen Guven broke away in that first race. Was there anything you guys could have done to slow him down? Uh, I don't think so. I think uh, me and Swellio both missed uh, the hairpin on lap one really bad. <laughs> I think if we wouldn't have done that, maybe we could have stayed in this draft. It would have been any chance of staying close to them. But I, I know myself, I didn't have the pace for him. So, uh, but yeah, it was uh, it was a fun battle though with Swellio and Pablo in the first race. And uh, yeah, it's been been a good time. Well. Go and chat to Pablo now as well. Pablo, you look very, very focused right now. How's it going as you sit behind Ayn Chen Guven, hunting down Tony Kanan, Quirk for the win? Yeah, the, the target is getting on the draft of Guven and try to keep there because he is faster than us and maybe he will attack the guys in front, Tony and Quirk. So we have a chance to get Pichu or maybe if he crash, we won. <laughs> Well, we're joined by Ayn Chen Guven right now. Ayn Chen, great to have you here in the Porsche All-Stars. Uh, it's clear that the rest of the competition thinks that you need to crash uh, for them to win. How do you think you get past Tony Kanan, who now sits in front of you? Uh, first of all, I think I hear something I should not hear just before you guys start talking. So, I hear the plans from the others, but yeah. Uh, 
I mean, yeah, we will see. Just everyone is is fighting hard, but fails so far. So let's see. It's a little bit tight with the incident points. So we will see. I'm glad to hear that you're worried about track limits. It's good to hear that even real drivers have that sort of a concern. But uh, Ainjo, we were talking about how you know you've obviously compete and won in the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup. Uh, what's it like for you now being here as a Porsche All-Star? Uh, it feels a little bit unfair to Pablo, if we're being honest. He's not competed in the Super Cup yet, and you have. Yeah, but I think he also drives in the past the World Championship, so I think it's it's almost the same same competition. But yeah, more or less, I spend a lot of time on the sim, and also, yeah, I did uh, the PESC in the past, but unfortunately with the... With the current calendar, it's not possible to make the pass game anymore for me, but I'm really enjoying to be part of the All-Star race. Well, Pablo, you've just moved Tony Kanan out of the way because you want to no, follow no, no. Iron Chan that much, right? You didn't leave me a space in the inside. I was leaving him room. <laughs> Uh, I, I, we, we saw, we'll get the replay and we'll, we'll figure out uh, who we're blaming here. Uh, Ayn Chen, one more question I think before yeah. we'll let you go. Let's talk a little bit about going down to Bathurst and racing there. What was that like? And not just racing there for the first time, but being able to win the great race. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Bathurst was one of the track I was dreaming to drive for a long time. And yeah, when I get the email from Porsche about the program that I will drive with the, with the Mente, with the Matt and Lawrence. That's, you know, it's, I, I was excited because it was my first race and I'm going to drive in the pro car with the, let's say the, the favorite car for the, for the race. And yeah, the pressure was there. And I, yeah, from the sim, I have experience for the long time, but the real stuff always different. You need, you need adaptation. But luckily the adaptation part worked really well. I was, I was on the pace from the beginning of the week and yeah, uh, luckily, we make the we make the the Bathurst 12 hour win, and uh, uh, it's probably one of the most special victory in my career so far. Okay, uh, Iron Chan, tell us what the plan is now to pass Quirk. How are you going to try and set this one up? Uh, uh, I think turn two or three. Let's see. Quirk, did you hear that? I did. Thanks for the insight. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the great thing about us in the Porsche All-Star world. We're able to spill and reveal all of these plans. Uh, Cork, how are you feeling up front? TK slowed down a few, but you still got some pressure now. Uh, I'm not feeling too good. He's really quick. <laughs> so, so you just got to have the world's widest uh, Porsche, Cork. Come on, world's widest Porsche. I, my elbows are going to go out, but I think it's just inevitable here that he gets me. All right, you've got 12 minutes to try and defend here. All right. Come on. I'll try. Well, thank you guys for coming and joining us. It's so great that we get to do this. And Paul, I mean, we've just been jumping through the grid and having a ball through all of it. Yeah, it's been certainly fantastic to uh, to be able to uh, talk to these drivers whilst they're uh, competing and, and fighting each other. And, and Quirk is only 0.2 of a second clear of Ayn Chan Gurvan, so uh, do keep an eye on that race lead, but also keep an eye on Kenny 500 in one of the most striking liveries that you will ever see here in the All-Stars. I mean, just look at that. It stands out. It's, it's stunning, in my opinion. Yeah, there are some really nice paint schemes that we've got on this Porsche. And it is a car. I don't know what it is about it, but it just lends itself well to, to different battles and you know as much as i want to keep talking about paint schemes mm. people on the r racing esports network know all about that back up front here comes Guba, not into turn one though like we thought he might oh yeah just holds on and quirk taking it over the curbs he can uh, do that with this car it is forgiving enough to be able to deal with those curbs but now look at this Guvan straight away on the attack and quirk i think he realizes that it's just an inevitability here to the inside for iron chan Guvan. quirk if he gets a good exit can actually get the run around the outside but no it hasn't worked and that allows the driver from turkey I am trying Guvan to move to the lead, but for how long? Because here comes Quirk back again. He's forcing Quirk, he's forcing him tight to the inside, which slows down Guvan. But there's move used and uh, move space left for them as we go on board with Quirk. Let's give you a little bit of full throttle action from Buzz.
as we come back to the pictures and sounds uh, of myself and Arjuna Kankapati here in the commentary booth. And this is a race for ninth place. And it's going the defensive move for Kenny 500 over Love 46, who is doing a great recovery drive here. It must be said. Oh, right. As I said, what is it about us, Arjuna, being able to do the, curse, the commentator on Love 46? I mean, the commentator's curse exists at the end of the day. And there's more living, breathing proof of it. And I think maybe actually getting the worst of all of that was basic Ollie, who ran into the back of uh, Love 46, and Sansoid has just passed. Yeah. Uh, Lewis McClay does not believe in the commentator's curse. I'm going to clip that and send it over to him again and just go, I don't know what you're talking about. Absolutely incorrect. This is looking rearwards from that great paint scheme of, of Kenny 500s. You see the red and the black little touches at the back. And oh, there's a couple of eyes looking very, very menacing. Uh, I can't actually tell, but that certainly is a stunning paint. And well, Kenny 500 right now will be uh, breathing a sigh of relief that there's a bit of a gap between himself and Love 46, who she did pretty much fall to the uh, the back of the field, but that means that uh, she's been on a charge back through here, gone ahead of Sam Soy, basically down to Zuki. It's worth pointing out as well, Storm Molina in 14th place uh, here in this one, so she's working well here is TK and Casey Kerwin. So Tony Kanan, Casey Kerwin going side by side and Casey gets the better run. I think Tony's decided I'm lifting out of that one. Yeah, especially with someone like Casey, who you know is so good under the brakes as well, has so much confidence in stopping the car. Sometimes it's just not worth the fight and uh, TK will now try and hold off Daniel Gray, a little bit of a margin then back to Swelio Almeida, who's not really forward, uh, followed forward with Casey since that little incident that we uh, last talked to them during. I, I, we've seen a lot of chat, by the way, Paul, on the iRacing Esports Network in Porsche's Twitch about how much fun it is for us to be able to interrupt the drivers like this. Uh, I agree, A. B, new rule for 2025. Uh, we can do the same thing in the Porsche Esports Super Cup. No, uh, oh, oh, could you imagine anyway. the complaints in that? Uh, uh, hashtag deal with it. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, so uh, as we uh, go up, speaking of the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup, the drivers are starting their qualifying now. Remember, they only get one lap to set a lap time, and Luke McEwen is wanting to try and make it two pole positions in a run to try and challenge Sebastian Joe for that uh, Porsche Tag Heuer uh, watch awards. But um, yeah, Lacuin on his lap there, Arjuna. And this, I, I cannot emphasize how important this one lap is because Paul qualifying poorly here, it really is going to put you on the back foot. Here comes Casey Kerwin on Stradi. We'll have more on the Super Cup on the hour, but Casey Kerwin to the inside gets the move done, Clovers covers the inside and covers Stradi off there on that one. That means it goes up into fourth place. If you look in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, you can see we've got the countdown to the Super Cup. That's the countdown to the first race of the day. So uh, make sure you check that out. And Kerwin's wide. Casey Kerwin loses positions down at turn number four. That's allowed Stradi, Tony Kanan and Daniel Gray to all go through. And again, it's because of the, the way each corner is so unique in its, in its construction, right? That corner down the hill, track falls away from you as you turn through the corner as well. So, so easy to slip a little bit wide, even if you don't lock the brake. And we'll grab one more chat with a driver. We'll check in with Daniel Gray as he tries to fire it up the inside of Tony Kanaan. How are you feeling right now, Daniel? Five minutes left to go. Uh, yeah, it's been a really fun race. Having Casey Cohen behind you is uh, always stressful. And uh, yeah, I think Tony Kanaan in front might uh, know a thing or two about racing cars. So. We'll see how I go. A little bit defensive into turn one, at least compared to Casey, who really sets up that opening corner. How much are you trying to straddle the line of not running too wide and getting an incident point to then be able to slam the door shut on Casey on the run to turn three? Uh, yeah, for sure, a super delicate balance. Sorry, I'm... <laughs> He's very much concentrating on the inside of Tony Kanaan and trying to make a pass while also defending. 
Uh, I'm normally good at talking while driving, but uh, we'll see how I go. If I can pick up a, a top six here, I'll be absolutely thrilled. I mean, I've had some fantastic battles with Tony Kanan this series, so uh, we'll see how it goes. What time is it for you, Daniel? Uh, it is currently 5.50 in the morning, so if I seem alert, awake, and uh, intelligent right now, that uh, that's why. It's, it's the coffee is what it is. Uh, we don't blame you for not being able to talk and drive at 5 o'clock in the morning, but always great to have you, Daniel. And Paul, I mean, you just, you saw as well, right, as soon as he went to make the move into the braking zone, instantly focused oh. and he, he went quiet. <laughs> Yeah, he went very quiet, and that's because it's just all brain power getting put on one thing, one thing only, uh, and it isn't talking to us. Daniel Gray made a mistake though, through the S's there. That allows uh, the number three, Australia Almeida, to go through. Of course, one of our podium sitters in that first race of the evening here. Well, we've got three minutes remaining of this All-Stars race, and it's still anybody's for second and then also for fourth place as well it's it's really close between second and third and then fourth place down here arjuna yeah not close behind chen cuban i mean at the end of the day he was able to work his way through remember he went from 17th to what was it 10th within the opening two laps and at that point you've gotten through the bulk of the work and from there it gets more difficult yes to pass but if you've already done the work you don't have to do as many of those passes and so he's done a great job but i think we have to give some kudos to quirk though you know he's been past what going on seven minutes ago at this point now and he's only two and a half seconds off he's holding off the pulpa lopez it's a great drive so far but the pulpa lopez knows with casey having a bit of a poor run another good chance for him to rack up some points yeah certainly that's uh, that's what the pulpa lopez needs right now in terms of the championship is getting more points in the bag than Casey Kerwin, and they threw the go. Two minute warning as we reach then. We've got two laps of action remaining in this race as we go through the right hander once again onto the brakes. Last corner. Don't hit that inside curb too hard, it will push you wide on corner exit. And then onto the loud pedal across the line once again and these two absolutely neck and neck quirks looking not looking defensive and that's open the door for the pulpa lopez but quirks gonna get the run on the power on the outside of the corner and we're gonna see some two wide action here up the hill towards turn number three as quirk still keeping it together with the pulpa lopez they're almost squeezing each other there to the edge of the track Quirk goes deep, the Pulpa Lopez tight line on the inside. Who's this one going to be for as we look for the fourth place battle as well, Arjuna? Yeah, I think fourth for the time being is going to be done. Kerwin's got it and will try and pull away, but I'm, I'd be a little bit worried if you're Quirk on the outside, down the hill. You want to make sure you don't leave yourself in a compromised spot. And finally, he gets his nose back into line. The Pulpa Lopez gets on through. What a great sequence it is. Quirk will try and fight back on the outside, but at this point, the Pulpa Lopez has got the inside through the double left-hander and has got second to his own. He certainly does as they go through. And, uh, yet yeah, the Pulpa Lopez second place. He'll be liking those points in terms of the championship. The fourth place battle, all Casey Kerwin is pulling away from Strati right now, who's really been together with TK, with Tony Kanaan, all the way through this race, it must be said. And those two together, absolutely neck and neck as they go through the final corner once again. One more lap to go here as Barney waves the white flag. And the drivers will just have just 4.3 kilometers to decide who is going to be finishing where. Ian Chankuvan is way out in front. Four and a half seconds. It was five and a half seconds in race one. Second race, race two, it is four and a half seconds is that lead. But who's going to be second? Quirk's having a look, but he's not close enough to make that move. No, there may be some moves further behind, though, because still, like we say, driver's close, and all it takes is one small mistake, and you're, you're in the hunt. Casey Kerwin's not really let Strati, TK, Almeida, or Gray have that chance. Now, the Popo Lopez, realistically, he gets through this braking zone. He'll feel comfortable about holding on to second. I mean, Paul, if this is the kind of tension we're going to be in for moving forward to the Super Cup, it's going to be remarkable because there comes the mistake and here comes Quirk. Absolutely neck and neck between the two of them. 
Quirk's not able to make the move stick, though. He can try and get the cut back here, get a little bit of a better run. And the Pulpa Lopez going defensive here. He's feeling that pressure, but he can hold that racing line and keep Quirk behind as they're going in towards the penultimate corner here. And, well, they're absolutely neck and neck, side by side. No move being made there, but at the front, it's Ayan Changuvan once again, a race winner, a double race winner here in the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports All-Stars. Cross the line for second place, the Pulpa Lopez just gets that one over Quirk. Casey Kerwin finishes in fourth place. The rest of the field comes through, but my goodness, Arjuna, that was some close action towards the end. As we dive into the Boast Post Race Show, couldn't quite see on Iron Chan Guven's face whether there was a smile or not. But Paul, I'm going to assume after two race victories, a big smile from grin uh, from ear to ear. As Iron Chan Guven, then six seconds in the end is the lead. That's just how much the Pulpa Lopez and Quirk were holding each other up on that final lap. Casey Kerwin finishes fourth ahead of Stradi in fifth with Tony Kanan, Swelly Almeida, Daniel Gray, Kenny 500 and Love 46 rounding out the top 10. Sam Soyd and Pacey Collie then 11th and 12th ahead of Dan Suzuki. Storm Molina, Borgesazzo and Grizzle together across the line. Matt Malone two laps down. Well, that is some of the excitement that we've had here in the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports All-Stars. And we get to speak to our race winner, Arjuna, with Ayn Chan Guvan. Ayn Chan, it was great to have you back in the field. How did it feel to be back behind the wheel of this virtual cup car as you uh, went racing once again? I've got to assume that uh, focusing on the GT3 in the real world for a little bit, it felt a little bit different with no ABS, no traction control. Yeah, yeah, the cup racing is my, let's say... Let's say background in GT racing. This is where I started and learn racing. So always I enjoy driving it. Yeah, but for a long time, as you mentioned, that I'm more spending time on GT3s, but it's always nice to be back in cup car with no ABS, no traction control. It's pure driving machine always. And yeah, today also is deliver a lot of fun to drive it. Obviously, you work with Porsche Coanda and Coanda Esports a lot behind the scenes. Uh, what can you can you give us any insight? What should we expect for the Porsche Esports Super Cup, uh, especially with those VRS Coanda drivers getting ready to go? Yeah, for sure. I'm I'm supporting my teammates. Uh, yeah, I follow them a little bit because I also also going to race this weekend. I check what they were doing, and yeah, I was trying to copy their setup, but unfortunately, it's it's fixed this weekend. So. Uh, here I cannot use them, but yeah, hopefully we see some of them on the podium and yeah, I, for also for the overall season, I'm supporting Zach. So yeah, hopefully he can score some good points today. There you go, Ayn Chan Guven, a supporter of Zach Campbell. Great to have you, Ayn Chan, here with us on the Porsche All-Stars. But Paul, Porsche All-Stars done and dusted. It's time to look forward and focus on the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be uh, an absolute thrill wide as we see the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup drivers take to the track. The qualifying is done for them. And we're just waiting to see who is on pole position. But we will see that after the uh, uh, end of this. But, uh, well... This is what happened in that uh, that All-Stars event. It certainly was a thrill ride and plenty of fun to watch. Don't forget to keep up to date with all that's happening here in the All-Stars. It is uh, iRacing.com forward slash PESC to, uh, to keep up to date with all of that. Arjuna, the, uh, the All-Stars, they were fantastic, but uh, the pros now, they're going to take to the track. Yeah, and I think, fortunately, I think for these All-Stars, they won't have to w deal with this cup car anymore. I know Ayn Chen Guven loves it, but we're off to the GT3s. Moving on forward. Absolutely. So, well, these drivers, they had their fun out there on track. As uh, the sprint race was done, we went into the main race. And these drivers, well, they get to look forward to then Imola next time out for the All-Stars, which will be a whole different kettle of fish for them in these uh, not in these porsche 992 cup cars but instead in the 911 gt3 r so the uh, gt3 spec machinery next time out there's that contact that we saw with porsche zazo stick around though because coming up next for you it is the porsche tag heuer esports super cup Get ready, a mid-season tournament here at Watkins Glen 
and there's going to be a lot on the line here. Revs are rising! Green flag, and we are away! Three wide, look at Alejandro Sanchez! Flash, flash, on the race, the white flag is in the air! It's going to be neck and neck, there's almost a rope between the two of them! Alejandro Sanchez wins the mid-season tournament in a Porsche attack on This world, it's all about fine lines. The line between success and failure. First place and last. Blurring the lines between reality and perfection. You've got to leave it all on the line. Welcome to season six. into the second half of the championship and after a successful mid-season uh, tournament last time out at Watkins Glen we're here at the Red Bull Ring in Spielberg and what an event it will be uh, it certainly is going to be a thrill ride for these drivers and well after a good round last time out winner in the main race, Alejandro Sanchez. We, we're going to be seeing and hearing from him a little bit more here, Arjuna. Yeah, and momentum. That's, I think, something we were talking a lot about in that mid-season tournament. There's only this round and then two more in April left to come in terms of championship really being decided. And Paul, you were kind of making a joke before we got underway. You really want to see the championship come down to the final race of the season. That's because the way that the championships played out year on year and year, one driver's been consistent, rose to the top, and eventually stayed out of enough trouble that we know relatively confidently, confidently going into the final round what things are going to be. We started at the beginning of February at Daytona. We went to Hockenheim, Le Mans, and Watkins Glen last time out. Now we're at the Red Bull Ring before two weeks time. We're at Imola and then Monza for the traditional season finale. Uh, and that is going to be a good thrill ride for that one. Uh, the sprint race, 10 laps long. We've had the lone qualifying. In the main race, the top eight from the results of the sprint race, they get inverted. And then it's 20 laps of action in the main for you here today at the Red Bull Ring. It's going to be fast. It's going to be frenetic. It's short laps here. It's going to be fantastic to watch for all of you and for us here in the commentary booth as well. And uh, well, speaking of results, we have got the result of the Port Tag Heuer Pole Award. And for the first time this season, it's Alejandro Sanchez who's standing by with Arjuna. And most importantly, Sebastian Job could have wrapped it up today, the, the season-long Tag Heuer Pole Award, but not able to get that done. Alejandro Sanchez able to put the lap together. Alejandro, we were talking about the pressure. One lap shootout qualifying, track limits being a hot button talking point. Talk to me about the lap that you put together. How happy are, are you about it? Uh, I'm quite happy. I just had the grip. I messed up a little bit T1, but other than that, the, the rest of the lap was pretty much perfect. Um, T4, well, no, T3, the car stopped really, really well, and I could just not slide the rears on the, on the exit as well, which really gave me good tires for the last sector, which is quite crucial. And then, yeah, it was just well driven, I'd say, and good setup, good strat, and yeah, can't complain too much. Happy for me and happy for the team. It's a really tidy run out of turn one, just riding as much of the limits as possible. Talk us through then, breaking into turn three, trying to square the car off and get the power down into the middle sector. Uh, it's the most, the trickiest corner in this track, uh, to be honest. It's just impossible to get it right uh, two times in a row. Uh, but I was lucky enough to get it right this time. I braked a little bit earlier than usual and the car just didn't, which, uh, didn't lock up the rears, which is usually the problem through there. 
and yeah that just gave me good tires for the rest of the lap t5 was i missed a little bit um the apex but just a tiny amount like 10 centimeters or so uh which was completely fine and then t6 is also a hot spot for off tracks uh, in this track and i tried to keep it relatively safe but uh since i had good grip i could just underdrive it quote unquote and then get a good sector out of the last one um uh, of course, the last corner is probably one of the scariest in this track as well, in terms of track limits. I just, yeah, underdog it a little bit, kept it in fourth, and just pray for the best. I got, I had a kick of oversteer on the exit of the corner, but yeah, <laughs> I'm happy with it. So one thing that Alejandro, I'll quickly ask you, we often talk about track limits being, you know, the white lines on track. It does seem as though a lot of the time here, there's a little bit more leeway in terms of the curb usage that you're allowed. How much of a balance was it for you in that lap? You say, you know, you underdrove some corners, gave it a little less risk. How much of a fine line are you walking there on a lap like that? It's not just a fine line on track limits. It's also not overdriving the car because as soon as you slide it a little bit, uh, your tires are done for the rest of the lap. So you got to be playing a game of balance between aggressiveness and just, you know, taking it safe. Of course, there are some corners where you cannot take it safe at all, like T1 and, and T2, because if you underdrive it, you just lose a tenth. But other corners like T3, for example, you can underdrive it a little bit, as long as you don't mess it up and underdrive it too much and just lose a lot of time. Congratulations on your first pole of the season. It's back-to-back -back poles for the Stormforce Racing Team. And Paul, stage has now been set here as we get ready to go for two races in the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup. Yeah, certainly. We are looking forward to this one. This is going to be absolutely fantastic. And we will take you through your starting grid. So Alejandro Sanchez, pole position, first one of the season for him in that Stormforce uh, team. And that was a fantastic lap from him. Only four tenths of a second covered the first 23. That is how close this field is. Jordan Caruso, last year's champion, is alongside him on front row with Pinto and Vico. What a start and place for Vico on row number two with Half and Nielsen on row number three. Fourth row for Lillam and Kaita with Jani and Webster then on row number five. It's all the way back to row number six for some championship leader Sebastian Job. Alongside him is Zach Campbell. Row 7, Parker White, Luke McEwen. Oh, not a good qualifying lap from him to be all the way down there in row 7. Matthias Stuckbeck and Brian Collins on row number 8 with Sarika and Sipola sharing row number 9. Uh, Jakub Maciejewski and Salva Talonzent on row number 10 with the 11th row of Oscar Pai and Josh Thompson. Gustavo Ariel and Julian Sonnen then on row number 12 with Dino Lombardi, Luca Kita on row number 13. Lassie back, Simone Minia Marcello and Oscari Rinne did not set a lap time here. We've got about 30 seconds in Arjuna. Um, key for this one, I suppose, is lap one, isn't it? Well, yes, but I think also momentum out of the last round with the mid-season tournament the, the way the points paid out, our championship has taken a wild swing. It's 85 points or so, right? Maximum points you can get from a regular format. Alejandro Sanchez, that pole uh, aside, is more than 100 points back. Paul, Job's still in a great spot, but the qualifying struggles the last two rounds, he's got to get that back on form sooner rather than later. He certainly does. But the drivers look to the flag stand. And the engines rise once again here. It's week number five of the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup, and it's underway. Away they go from that starting grid, and it's Sanchez who gets a good launch. He's able to keep ahead of Jordan Caruso through turn number one. They go then. It's Pinto and Pico in third and fourth place. Everybody safely through that turn number one. Sweep your way through turn number two now, and Sanchez feeling the need to try and break the slipstream of Caruso behind onto the brakes for the first time. And everybody, concertinas up to together do stay clean and going in this one though as we go up over the top of the hill we start heading back downhill Arjuna you mentioned the elevation changes Caruso's looking busy at the front it's looking busy in the middle of the top 10 
Yeah, now we're going to get some chaos, I think, because I see Timing Tower on the left. There's all sorts of chopping and changing. Not sure who's dropped to the very back, but Janet. it all, as Caruso with that look, I think sort of kicks that move off because behind him, Paul, it wasn't that much of a chaotic start. They were actually all fighting rather orderly through turn three. It was down through that next corner where things got a little bit more hectic, and I can only assume now that there'll start to be a breakaway with 10 laps on the board, one lap about to be done. Yeah, it's only a short race, is a sprint race. 10 laps of action here as they go through that final corner across the line. End of the first lap then, it is Sanchez from Caruso, Pinto and Biko with half in fifth place ahead of Kevin Nielsen who's in a good spot. Then it's Chris Lowham ahead of Sam Keita, Cooper Webster in ninth ahead of Zach Campbell and Sebastian Job has not been able to move, make any movement forward at all. He's still in 11th place, he's championship leader. Yeah, but I don't think he wants to force the issue either, right? The last thing you want to do is get in trouble with the race control director as moves are being made further forward, and that's the risk. They're all just tripping over one another. Not sure which of the red line cars that was that bundled out wide. Now, that might have been Gustavo Ariel, but... Excuse me, not Gustavo Ariel. It's further up through the field. Sam Coited, excuse me. But the point being, though, Paul, he's just trying to make sure he's got a clean car and not put himself at a disadvantage. Now he's in ninth and hoping maybe for a top eight invert for the second main race coming up later. Yeah, he's slowly moving his way forward as Sebastian, the championship leader. If somebody knows how to win a championship, well, it's our 2020 champion from the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup. And uh, as they go through this left and then flat out right, for 11th place here then, it's McEwen who, as I said, when we're going through the grid, not the best qualifying from him after, remember, he was on pole position at Watkins Glen just two weeks ago. Yeah, McEwen's really been, uh, you know, the best of the rookies, I guess, this season uh, in terms of really showing us that potential from him. Started off at uh, Daytona, of course, with the victory in the sprint race. Has only finished outside of the top 10 once, which we often talk about second season syndrome. Drivers struggle their first year. It takes until that second year. Hopefully, they get to retain their license and they come back a little bit more settled and are able to get that all sorted. I think what we're seeing is the experience at play from the Apex Racing team oh. able to help him up front. Here comes a move as former champion Diogo Pinto trying to go the long way around on defending champion Jordan Caruso. This is allowing Sanchez to just extend his margin. It's now up to almost eight tenths of a second. It's the 2022 champion versus the 23, and it's Pinto and Caruso absolutely neck and neck into turn number four. Caruso's got the inside line, but Pinto's going to be on the power. He should get that move completed by the time they reach the next corner. Yes, he does. So up into second place for Diogo Pinto, who is Sebastian Job's closest championship rival. Speaking of Job, well, he's in eighth place right now. He's got himself into a provisional reverse grid pole position. That's exactly where he wants to be. Maybe not getting the best result from the sprint race and qualifying in terms of points, but leaves him where he needs to be. Now you can see the bottom of the screen, some of those drivers outside of the top 10 fighting. We'll just highlight Alejandro Sanchez having a great day in that Stormforce racing entry. Uh, some of the other drivers in that team not having such a good run. Paul, you were correct. It was Michael Johnny that got tangled up on the opening lap. Salva Talens has just been mixed up in something else. He's now down the very back of the field. As you take a look at the championship standings, though, the mix-ups really seeing Pinto and Joe getting even closer together. Yeah, that gap is getting closer on the live points. You and Half as well um, is uh, up there along with Luke McEwen. Half down in uh, the uh, outside of the top 10, is it? No, it's fifth. My eyes deceive me. Well, that's not for the first time. As we go through turn number three, here is your championship leader. And for that uh, Oracle Red Bull Sim Racing team, Sebastian Job, I suppose he won't be really in a mad rush to try and move forward because he has got a little bit of a rear gunner behind him in Cooper Webster. Yeah, I think what we're not going to see, by the way, on the look on the face here, is the concern that I think the Oracle Red Bull Sim Racing crew will probably have in that, go back to Le Mans. They were the ones that surprised us in many ways, right? With the lines that they found, the ways that they were able to build more speed on, first in qualifying and then in the race itself. 
after that, well, Watkins Glen, what happened? Well, Stormforce on top. They responded. They found that little bit more time in qualifying to put themselves in contention. And Joe wasn't thrilled about that. In fact, I don't think many of those cars were. Similarly here, Paul, clearly what we've seen is in the last couple of weeks, a slight shift in the balance of performance in how much speed these teams and drivers can get out of their cars. Yeah, it's incredible just how, even though they're all in identical machinery, setups, how you prepare your cars on a qualifying lap, just basic things like that can have such a huge impact here as there's some moves further down the order. Uh, well, that was at last say back making a move for Oscar Pye, and look at this, one of those Stormforce cars trying to get involved with Oscar now in that one as they head towards the hairpin, and Oscar Pye has got to be careful because Luca Kita, who was, I think, pulled off one of the moves of the season at Watkins Glen, Luca Kita, around the outside of the carousel in one of the heat races. Uh, well, he moves forward now up into 22nd. Luke, Luke Akita does have some damage on the right front portion of his car, so hoping that's not uh, impacting him at all. That move was great, but I think Alejandro Sanchez's move may have yeah. slightly topped that, especially given the situation uh, when you when you factor in some of those things. The thing with, with Luke Akita, though, is, you know, part of the Stormforce team left Urado last year when, unfortunately, that program came to an end. I'll be honest, I kind of thought he'd be up towards the front where Luke McEwen kind of has been. It just hasn't all come together just yet, maybe qualifying as well. Watkins Glen was a good sign. He's in the top 15 pool. Well, let's be honest, all the drivers want to be first half. That's where you hopefully lock yourself in for 2025. Luke McEwen, you mentioned him, is up to 10th place now. So he's been moving forward. He's got Cooper Webster in front of him and Chris Lullum in front of Webster. Now, the important thing is on that lap, Sebastian Job did make a move on Chris Lullum. And that means that he's been able to get himself further into that top eight. A little bit of extra points for Sebastian. But it just means that if there's, if there's an incident or something like that, he's less likely to, to fall outside of that top eight for that inverted grid as more defensive driving going on behind because Kevin Nielsen's now under pressure uh, behind this gaggle of cars at the front. Pinto has been on a little bit of a mini charge, by the way. He's been slowly closing that gap lap after lap, but I don't know whether he'll be able to get right onto the tail of Sanchez. Not just yet, so four to go at the line. Uh, for Job, every position he kind of gains at this point is worth a point. Is it really worth it? I mean, they're two by two behind. It's a bit of a risky situation unless you feel like you have to put yourself in front of the group rather than behind in case something does happen. He's up to six now. Just look at the focus, though, on Alessandro Bico's face and then the composure for Jordan Caruso. Genuinely, I know it's early in the morning for Jordan Caruso, but it looks like he's just woken up. As uh, we're on board with Job here, and he's actually gone ahead of Kevin Nielsen. Nielsen's now side by side with Chris Lullum. And you can see those live championship points on the right hand side of his screen. So if things were to finish in the sprint race as we are right now, Job is going to be a little bit better off. And do you know what? He's not worried about those behind because Nielsen's going defensive on Lullum. Job's looking forward. But looking back, Nielsen is putting on a heck of a defensive display because it's everybody for seventh place. And Job knows, right, that he can pass these drivers. He's done it once. He feels confident in his ability to do it again. And that's why he's trying to pull forward. Oh, Zach Campbell, don't do that in front of him. Lullum, contact with first the apex car of McEwen and then into the fire car. Somehow we fire off the corner with Zach Campbell forward to seventh. Ian Chen Gubin's got a big smile somewhere. Zach Campbell with the big 200 IQ move right there. Let them all knock each other off the track and I'll take that seventh place. Sam Kiter up to eight. Luke McEwen's dropping down the order on the timing tower. So something big's happened to him as well. We're looking at the front of the field though because with four laps to go, Pinto has caught up because he was almost half a second quicker on that last lap with Pinto. So Diogo Pinto, is on a charge here. 
And I think that Sanchez will just go defensive and we'll see now how feisty uh, the Portuguese driver is going to want to be. I can tell you, by the way, that not just McEwen involved, but I saw Kevin Nielsen having to take a tow back to pit lane. So putting two and two together, I wouldn't be surprised if they came to blows. But three laps to go at the line. You've got, what, six cars realistically in a line, five in contention. And Pinto's the one that's charged. Has he taken a bit too much from his tires? Don't ever count out Caruso from putting himself into the mix. McEwen's taken a drive through penalty. He's got a black flag, as has Kevin Nielsen. So those instant points are key. We're looking at a replay well on the top. The race for the lead is ongoing as well. This is the look from Zach Campbell's view on the replay. There's contact between McEwen, Nielsen and Lowen. And Zach Campbell says, thanks boys, I'll take that. But meanwhile, at the front of the field, Pinto's going for the lead here around the outside. It's not going to be the easiest place to make the move, and Sanchez shuts the door for the time being. And now watch behind, because Caruso, for a moment, was trying to get alongside with Pinto. He then had to go defensive to stop Biko from getting the look to come alongside to his inside. There is so much racecraft going on right now. It's clear the draft is keeping these cars close enough together that you're going to have to protect from runs. It's not quite like being at Daytona for the Daytona 500, but there's a lot of analogies that you can carry forward in terms of blocking momentum, seeing the lines, and seeing those opportunities. Paul, I'm gonna call it now. Two laps to go, we're gonna be three wide in these final two laps. Oh, there's gonna be something happen. It's gonna be crazy. Uh, by the way, catching up at the back of your shot, there you see him, Sebastian Job. So after a, a, a poor by his standards qualifying of 11, he's up into sixth place and he can sniff the potential of a podium here with two laps to go. They all ran wide out of turn one. They clearly rationed their incident points and are now taking whatever liberties they can. Oh, this gets me nervous. When he snake back and forth towards a braking zone, when you're curving into it, no move's going to be made at this point. It, Paul, would it, does it really benefit you to wait for the final lap here? I don't think it is. I think you've got to go when you can. If you think that you've got the speed over the car in front of you, make the move. And that's what Pinto is doing. I think Sanchez may be just slowing himself down a little bit by doing all this weaving. He's got to hold it on the apex there. Try and draw the others into this one. And Sam Campbell is hanging on to seventh place right now ahead of Sam Keiter and Chris Lullen. Uh, they've got Cooper Webster behind them as well. So... Uh, that's all the race for seventh place. Remember, eighth place is pole position for the main race, Arjuna. Watch the way that Sanchez is defending here as well, because out of turn four, he basically parked it on the entry in a place where Pinto could not do anything with. This isn't going to be about making moves. It's about Sanchez placing his car at the right place at the right time. One lap to go, and I've got to make sure out of turn one, Paul, there's no mistake, there's no bobble on the outside curve. Here we go then, start of the last lap of the sprint race then. Uh, will we see any moves here? Pinto and Sanchez have pulled slightly away from Caruso. Pinto taking the wider line over the runoff. He's trying to carry the speed through turn number one in towards this sweeping left-hander at turn number two. It's a nothing corner in these cars and then on to the brakes for this right-hand hairpin. Pinto, he's gone in a little bit to the side of his car that slowed him down and here comes Caruso in all of this but Pinto closes the door he's going from attack to defense here because Caruso has got a nose in there can he make the move for second place no fanned out three wide but I think that is what enabled Sanchez to hold on Pinto couldn't break deep he was on too tight an entry into the corner what a fight, Paul. If this is what we're in for for a longer main race, let's not forget, not only are these drivers going to be flipped around and some having to defend when we've watched them attack, but we know they can stay close. We know they'll keep each other accountable. And boy, get your fingernails ready to be pitted because there's no going anywhere from this action. It's Soul Force Racing from Team Redline, from Altus Esports, from Williams Racing, from Apex Racing Team, my goodness, this top five has been, you can cover them in a cloth. They're that close together, but the race winner, Alejandro Sanchez, takes the sprint race win here in the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup. The race for eighth is going to finish out with Sam Kiter 
finishing eighth place at the end of that one. But my goodness, what a sensational racing at the front. And as you point out, out Arjuna, we've got another race of that to come up. But let's just quickly take you through your results here. Sanchez from Pinto, that is the front two with Jordan Caruso, Alessandra Bica, Johan Half and Sebastian Job all covered by 1.1 seconds. Zach Campbell, seventh ahead of Sam Kaita, Lullum and Webster is his top 10. Then it's Sipula, Stuckback, and then Ariel, Sarika, White, Maciejewski, Keita, Back, Thompson, and Pai to round out your 20 point scorers. The rest of them do not score points. Son in Lombardi, Mania Marcena, Jani, Collins, Talens, Rene, McEwen did not finish, neither did Kevin Nielsen. Arjuna, you've got our sprint race winner. Standing by once again from pole to victory, but it wasn't easy, Alejandro. I mean, you had a bit of a buffer. Diogo managed to close it. How tense were you feeling in those final couple of laps? Oh, you forgot to unmute yourself, Alejandro. Oh, my bad. There uh, you go. It was pretty tense. Uh, leading is a big disadvantage around here. You just mess up your tires, so I was just trying to manage the gap as much as I could. In the end, he caught up to me, obviously. It's... I'm also struggling for pace in, in race stream, so yeah, it wasn't great. Um, yeah, just happy uh, with the win and with the way I drove, basically. It was quite quite hard to manage the side by side as well and to try to keep it as clean as possible, but overall I'm happy. I was very impressed at the ways that you were defending on that final lap. Uh, you just swinging your car through turn four, five, whatever we call it, uh, because of Pinto and Caruso side by side. That was really cool. What can you do now from eighth? You say you're struggling a bit for race pace, a little bit longer of a race as well. What are you expecting? Just gonna pray for the best. <laughs> Not expecting anything at this point in this championship. I can get 20 points deducted at any given time just because race control decides so. So I'm just here to have fun at this point. <laughs> well, I, could, I, I know you're already on track doing some more, so we'll let you get ready to go for the second race. Congrats, Alejandro, on the sprint race win and best of luck for the main race. Thank you very much. And uh, Paul, if you couldn't tell by the fact that he was looking off to the right side of his screen, uh, he was going through turn three. Uh, it wasn't hard to tell. <laughs> yeah, the drivers uh, seem to be able to cope with speaking to us better than our all stars. Well, uh, if you are wondering about iRacing and wondering about uh, joining in, well, this is the start of season two on iRacing. You scan the QR code on the screen. It'll take you to information about all the new content, the new cars, the new tracks, and the new iRacing weather system as well and uh, the drivers have been having a lot of fun I've been having a lot of fun as well uh, I've never had so much fun crashing a car uh, in very wet conditions Arjuna yeah, and you know, I think what we are still waiting to understand in a lot of ways is, you know, we're having a fun with it. Now we've got to get serious. We've got mm -hmm. to figure out where drivers are going to find the speed. We talk about the changing conditions, but, you know, that's one part of it. Uh, the drivers are going to have to spend so much time understanding dry, wet racing. How do you build setups that compromise for both? I was talking to some drivers last night, Paul, and they were saying right now they haven't built any rain adjustment into their setups a good dry setup they hope is good enough in the rain i can't wait to find out what more especially we just saw, saw a shot there imagine what happens during the 24 hours of the nurburgring just imagine that's uh, that's what i'm waiting for uh, myself but uh, right now do check it out the march build of iRacing start of season two uh, and it, well it certainly is an exciting time to be an iRacing member. Don't forget, 40% off of all new iRacing memberships if you do want to join us. Speaking of joining us, we are here at Spielberg at the Red Bull Ring, 4.3 kilometers in length. Arjuna, uh, we've seen some thrilling racing already from race one. What are the keys for race two in this one? We've seen mistakes, right? I think that's the reality. This is one of those tracks that punishes with the 65 meters of elevation change between its lowest to highest point. That's not insignificant. And it comes in those braking zones when your tires want to lock up and, 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 and lock just that little bit more. No ABS to save you, right? This longer race, I think we have to assume drivers have to settle in right to the first part and then go for it all go for the glory in the second half of the race i think paul we're going to expect lap one chaos lap two three settle down and then build from there once again 
yeah we do generally see how the drivers sort of calm themselves down after the uh, freneticness of race uh, of the first lap and then get themselves into that race session well if you want more information about uh, uh, not just the standings but also the drivers the schedule uh, and also how uh, you can compete in the porsche taco esports super cup how you can qualify for it well check it out iracing.com forward slash pesk for all the information it's also got information on the all-stars there so do check that one out but we are getting ourselves set for the main race here at the Red Bull ring. And it's Sam Keiter and Zach Campbell on the front row of the grid. Sebastian Job, championship leader, is going to be sharing it with Johan Half. Then Alessandro Bico and Jordan Caruso, row number three. Diogo Pinto and Alejandro Sanchez, the sprint race winner, is on row number four. Row five, back is where they finish. So it's Lil and Webster, Sipola and Stuckbeck. Ariel and Sarika then on row seven, Parker White and Jakub Maciejewski on row number eight with uh, Luka Kita and Lassie Beck on row number nine. Josh Thompson and Oscar Pye round up row ten with Julian Sonnen and Dino Lombardi. Manuel Marcena and Gianni rounded out row number twelve. Bring Colin Salva Talons with Oscar Dine and then look at that, Luke McEwen, one of your top three coming into this round of the championship, down on row number fourteen. And Kevin Nielsen all the way at the back of the grid on run number 15. We've got about well, just under a minute to go before the start of this one, Arjuna. Um, I want to throw you a little bit under the bus here. Uh, I, I want a prediction. Who do you think is going to take this one? It's very difficult because I think a lot of people will favor Sebastian Job. I think with good reason as well. But Sebastian Job's had a bit of an interesting couple of minutes here. Uh, got drops from the session, has probably spent the last couple of minutes all in his head, frantically trying to reconnect and get back onto the grid in time. That can send you for a lot of pressure. I don't know, Zach Campbell stayed out of trouble. Caruso looked good, but Pinto. Okay, Pinto, there you go. Pinto was the one that was flying. I've got a pick there. Well, there we go. That's uh, the choice. Um, I'll sit on the fence as usual. Uh, <laughs> I'll end up with splinters by the end of the season with how much fence sitting I have, but with the time counting down, we are all set then for the main race. 20 laps of racing around this Red Bull ring. The engines rise. And we are green. And it's a good launch from Zach Campbell on the front row of the grid. Sam Keiter is going to be under some pressure in towards turn number one. It's absolutely neck and neck for the lead. Keiter is going to go wide, is he? Yes, he is. He's going to try and carry the speed. There's drama further back in the field, I can tell you. But we stay green flag racing. A big, big accident towards the rear of the field. There's a number of cars involved in that one. But the race lead, Zach Campbell's lost it because Keiter has been able to take that back down the inside Johan Half is trying to get the move on Sebastian Joby stays ahead in third place right now but there's been some huge huge moves further back due to carnage on lap one so I'll just name some names involved Lull and back pie talons Johnny Colin Sipola and the list goes on and on down out of that right hander though still side by side for what was second for a moment was about to be third as Johan Hart goes defensive to block off Sebastian Job into this double left hander this is remarkable I mean the amount of chaos at the start has now made, meant the gaps have been broken up in a lot of ways Paul what was I saying about crazy lap one and then settling in are we about to see them all just ride for a couple more laps Chris Lullum and Matthias Stuckbeck both with mechanical meatball warning flags. So they are done for this race. No points for them in the second race of the day. But at the end of lap one then, it is Sam Keiter in the lead for Team Redline ahead of the VRS Coanda Esports driver of Zach Campbell. You're in half third place holding on to that third place ahead of Sebastian Jobs. That Campbell, not the best exit 
through turn number one. Now, half, I think, is going to play a long game here, potentially. Or maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. He's looking to the inside of turn number three. There's that Campbell alongside him. And Jordan Caruso making a move on Sebastian Job. And Job thinks, well, I'm getting out of that one. I'd rather lose one place rather than be facing the wrong way. That came a bit out of nowhere. I wonder if Har thinks he's just quicker than Campbell. I know the two of them have had their bits of beef since Campbell left the Apex Racing team. Hasn't always been hunky-dory. And so maybe just uh, Campbell, I know, has been focusing on some projects at school. Formula SAE maybe not as quick up towards the front. And there you see a return of the favor. Job tries to throw it up the inside of Caruso. They're not settling down on lap number two. Track position clearly relatively important as the tires begin to fall off. Yeah, absolutely, and we heard it from Sanchez in that interview after the first race. That was only a 10-lap race with double the length of race, and tyre wear is going to be all about that. It's all going to be about managing that tyre wear, and Sebastian Job, there we see him looking back at 2023 champion of uh, Jordan Caruso. Sebastian Job, of course, finishing uh, in the top three last season. Uh, not just in the top three, he, he, finished, se he finished second there. So uh, he, he really does have that knowledge of being involved in a championship fight. But I think this has been the best that I've seen Sebastian Job for quite a long time here in the opening of uh, this year. Speaking of moves this year, Johan Half to the inside of Sam Kaitak. Kaitak goes deep and Johan Half takes the lead. And I get the sense that chopping and changing might be pretty frequent uh, if being at the front is a disadvantage, right? That's what Alejandro was also saying. So maybe you are not going to force yourself to hold the lead. That's Job looking to the inside of Campbell. Very, very late moves as well. This is maybe what we're seeing with the line going back first uh, through, I mean, if you factor 1.5 seconds, there's not really that large of a gap. First through 21st, you're going to have to make large moves under brakes but if everyone's basically running the same speed you don't really get the chance to do anything unless it's a surprise as the points sit right now we're not really looking at too much of a swing in momentum at the live championship point the biggest swing at least in my opinion is the fact that jordan caruso starts to jump his way even more into the fight paul he came into this one almost 120 off your leader yeah he, he's he's not had a good championship defense and uh, to be honest has anybody ever really had a good championship defense here in this championship because uh, you've not had back-to-back -back champions here in the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup you think back even uh, Josh Rogers he had to wait a year uh, before he could then get a second title uh, and then everybody else has only had one title each so move to the inside for Zach Campbell that was a late lunge under the brakes he makes the apex of the corner but Pinto's going to be good on power and corner exit but Caruso looks like he's trying to push uh, Zach Campbell along there on the inside line is he going to be able to really send it under the brakes. Campbell's really not forcing the issue right here. Got a small overlap with Coiter, allows him the opportunity to just run his speed down through the corner. Not going to be completely clear into the first of the oh. left-handers, but a bit of a hip check gives a bit of a message over to Sam Coiter, but sticks his car there, not going to give up the ghost. This is perfect for Johan Hart. If we talked about maybe not getting breakaways, already 1.2 clear. By the time we get to the penultimate corner, watch that margin might even be up to 1.8. Oh, it's a go through. So, uh, yeah, half in the lead. Ahead of Zach Campbell in second. And Sebastian Job says, thank you very much. I'll take that now. So up to third for your championship leader. And Kaita, after leading in the early stages of this race, drops down to fourth place. And he's now got 2023 champion uh, of Jordan Caruso behind Zach Campbell. Doesn't look comfortable there, does he, Arjuna? It's kind of looked like, to be fair, what he's been like this season where, you know, last year for parts of the, the year, we thought he might even be a contender for the championship. And while, you know, this year he's been the best of the VRS Kawanda drivers, he's still down in eighth in the points and, you know, best finish of uh, third uh, in the sprint race at Hockenheim before the mid-season tournament, finished fourth there. Hasn't been all ideal for him as we jump on board with defending champion. And again, 
He's a little frustrated as well, but his eyes pretty close. Like I said earlier, Paul, he definitely looks like he's just woken up from a nap. <laughs> See, the problem is with me is if I went for a nap, then Pino waking me up for the second race. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, the difference between somebody of Jordan's age and someone of my age. But anyway, as we go through the left-hander, then not many left-handers at this track, in fact. As uh, Caruso in tight in. And then getting over the outside there, over the curbs. And half, he had that just over one second lead. That is starting to close up just that little bit now. It was 1.2 at the line last time. About three tenths gain, uh, two tenths gain by Zach Campbell. I don't think Sebastian Joe will force the issue if Zach continues to close the gap. If Zach starts to slow down, though, then you'll start to see Sebi make some moves and start to show his nose and his intent just that little bit more. In terms of this race, by the way, uh, last race, not great for Luke McEwen. I think it's fair to say. Paul, he's up 13 spots this race so far, only to 15. I know that doesn't sound great, but I just want to shout out that the... the the perseverance, right? It's so easy in sim racing, just such a mental game to kick yourself when you're down in the doldrums. He hasn't let that happen. He's fought his way back into contention and could still very well be in for, if not a top 10, even more than that. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a really good drive through the field for Luke McHugh, and that's uh, absolutely spot on there. And he's only 5.2 seconds off of the race lead right now. That, that just shows how close this field is on track. 21st place is nine seconds back. Oh, oh as there's a spin, and that is suboptimal there uh, for Julian Sonnet. And gets back up and running uh, down there in 21st place. Remember, points down to 25th in this race. And, well, the top 25 are the only ones left running here. Yeah, and 10-lap sprint race, so we're going to get to the point where we, drivers will know exactly how their tires are going to fall off to and then from there it's a bit more uncertainty so Sonnen gets dived and then contact up the inside as the 96 tries to slide its way on through as well excuse me the 95 uh, of Parker White and so uh, I'm fortunate there for Sonnen but that's the give and take nature of that corner and it's why Paul as much as I think turn three is frustrating for me turn four personally my most irritating corner on the track yeah, it's certainly a, a corner of the track that uh, a few do not enjoy indeed. Well, let's look a little bit back then. Race for 12th place. It's Marina Sarika, Josh Thompson, Luke McEwen, and Simone Mania Marcheno. There is Sarika with the, uh, in my opinion, best livery on the track with the copper front end to that Duracell livery as they go downhill once again onto the brakes. And, uh, well, it certainly it has been one of those races. Sarika's gained two places so far, but I think he'd be wanting to be up there a little bit further forward. Yeah, I think, again, I said it in the All-Stars, qualifying here, very important, because it puts you in a good spot. As much as the draft, the passing is... is, is 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 there sebastian Job, for example in that first race there weren't many other drivers that charged forward with the same sort of intent as him we're seeing that a bit more in this second race uh, gustavo ariel six ga uh, places gained for him same for machievsky uh McHugh is now plus 14 so we are seeing a few of those drivers just be a little bit more aggressive as i guess paul one thing that we haven't touched on just yet it does seem as though the sun is setting maybe also cooling off the track very slightly uh, if the sun's setting, then something's wrong with the sun because it's uh, half past two in the afternoon. Well, it's in. I can uh, tell what? you. Maybe there's some cloud. Well, I was going to say there's some cloud cover, but it's completely clear. No, uh, <laughs> what I meant by that is, you know, that we're going past the peak point of the day on I races, yes. so the temperature should be expected to fall off slightly. Yes. Comparing qualifying to the sprint race to the main race. Yeah, absolutely. Track temp, 25 and a half degrees. Um, here in this one. Maciejewski then, Jakub Maciejewski. We've, we've barely really talked about him all season. He's, he's always seemed to have got involved in incidents throughout this season. Uh, but right now, Jakub is up there. He's not had a top 10 finish this season so far. I, I think, I don't want to say anything right now. <laughs> I'd rather just see how he gets
gets on in this one, his best result, 17th in the main race at Daytona. I thought you were going to say his best result was sixth in the heat race back at Watkins Glen, and we don't need to go into more details there, Paul. We'll leave that exactly as it was said. Uh, but, you know, he's not had the best run. And Driver Racing, new team last year, uh, founded uh, in part with professional Polish goalkeeper behind the scenes helping them all out. There's a very, very fascinating story there. Won a world championship last year. We saw them flying in the INSA Esports Global Championship. I think for Maciejewski, he's running by himself in this championship, which a lot of the other teams have partnerships. Koanda and Altus, they work together, not necessarily building setups, but working on track and, you know, build, being with each other. That's an advantage, Paul, and something that Maciejewski by himself is doing a really good job. I mean, look at Ascari Rene in the BS Plus competition team, all by himself as well. Yeah, absolutely, and it's uh, it is telling a little bit as Alejandro Sanchez, the sprint race winner, he's gone backwards in this one, so he's uh, falling back. Meanwhile, at the front, Sebastian Job making moves forward now on Zach Campbell. They squeeze a little bit into the braking zone, and the tiniest of touches between the two of them. Job runs wide, Campbell holds on to second place for the time being but as we're heading towards the halfway point we're not quite there yet job is starting to make some moves here yeah has he gotten to the point where he thinks he saved enough of the tire wants to start using it a little bit more does he see the drivers behind maybe starting to fall away a little bit more there is a gap opening between pinto and ariel these are all the things that the drivers are, are, are trying to work through it and make decisions around them Look at Zach Campbell's face again. He's not looking so frustrated anymore. He's locked in right now to the task at hand. And it was interesting hearing that Ian Chinguven was a fan of Zach Campbell's because Zach Campbell's always told me he's a big fan of Ian Chinguven. So clearly the <laughs> feeling is mutual. Yeah, absolutely. But remember, they've got to get past the Frenchman and Johan Haaf, who does have race win under his belt. Uh, does Johan? Uh, it took him a long time to do so, but when he finally got it, my goodness, a release of emotion and all that was absolutely uh, fantastic to see. Into the hairpin again, onto the brakes, onto the power corner exit, and uh, no moves being made as yet at this point, although looking a little bit further back in your field, Ariel Biko, you can see them chopping and changing in the background of shot there. They're all tripping over each other, and Cooper Webster's getting involved in this one. A little bit of a hip and a shoulder, and, well, just enough. Cars with left there on corner exit. And that was the gap that I was mentioning that was starting to build behind, and that is, by the way, the best livery in the grid, the Gulf uh, front end on the Williams eSports machine as it slides its way and forward. Now, Gustavo Ariel not going to be thrown up the inside by Cooper Webster, who's tucked back into line. Didn't want to force the issue, and I think that was a smart thing to do, knowing the now 9 10 gap that Biko has to close. You don't want to start tripping over you, each other at this point. And Paul, we thought, talked about it a lot more in the All-Star race with the track limits there. These drivers, you know, they know exactly the, the limits to which they can run, the pixels to which they can run. Haven't seen track limits come to be a talking point just yet. This is double the race length. I would be curious if anyone's getting close to the limit. And don't forget as well, for anyone new to iRacing, wondering uh, what we're talking about with uh, sort of any limit, well, the iRacing system does have a no-fault incident uh, points system. So if you go off track, you get one incident point allocated to you. If you lose control, it's two incident points. And if you have heavy contact with another car, that is four incident points. And, uh, well, looking ahead is Zach Campbell. And if you fancy joining in the action here on iRacing, then make sure you join us. Log on to iRacing.com and start your iRacing career today because every day is a race day on iRacing. And right now, Jordan Caruso, I think he's getting a little bit frustrated behind Sam Kaita in fifth place. Yeah, I uh, can see that gap opening up in Caruso. He's tried a few surprise moves before, but at what expense on his own tires? Did he take a little bit too much life out of them in just slowing the car down? There's so much of the, these races, Paul, we call them sprint races, but so much micromanagement from lap to lap to give yourself the opportunity to be there at the end, right? Today, the, there's the 12 hours of Sebring going on. 
and they've had lots of safety cars, right? What do they always say? Just make sure on the lead lap in the final hour, you've got a chance. Same sort of a thing here. Keep your tires alive, be in the top five, top 10, going into the final stages, and you have a decent chance. And that's something that in a competition like this, where let's be honest, Paul, if you or I were qualifying out there, the fields within four tenths, we're about four seconds off. You've got to recognize that 20th in a field like this is really good. Yeah, absolutely. It's 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 like any form of top level racing throughout the world. It's you see somebody in their you know sort of eighteenth, nineteenth in the race, and people say, "Oh, how poor are they?" Stick them into any other series, and they're going to be walking away from you. That it's it's when you get all of these top drivers all together in a series like this, it, you have to step it up another level, and. That's what you're seeing from people, um, from Sebastian Joe, from Diogo Pinto, from Luke McEwen. Uh, Alejandro Sanchez, his last couple of weeks, has really picked up. Johan Half as well. You know, so it shows how, you know, the level of competition just keeps on going steeper and steeper, and it gets harder and harder out there. And the margins are hundreds of a second between each other. Well. We're having a look back from Zach Campbell's car. There is 2020 champion Sebastian Job, championship leader, as we go for full throttle with Buzz. to the head of the field. Johan Half drops behind Sebastian Job. So now it's Zach Campbell, the American, in the lead over the Brit of Zach Campbell, of, 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 Campbell, of Sebastian Job in second place. There's your live championship points right now. And Sebastian, you can see how he was compromised in race one, didn't get the, the, the greatest result, lost championship points in terms of qualifying and the race, the sprint race points, but now we're coming to that main race where the points, they're a lot more significant. That's giving him a bigger lead as things stand right now coming out of this week. That's why we were kind of questioning. For Johan Harth, if he holds up those behind Paul, we get two drivers fighting at the very front. It's going to take some time though for that gap to build. Diogo Pinto and Jordan Caruso duking it out as well with Alessandro Pico behind them. It's the Australian, it's the Portuguese driver and the Italian driver all together there. Here comes Pinto and he's moved up into fifth and Pico's going to make the move into sixth place. So Caruso, well, he's hanging on to it, but he can't hang it on around the outside there. So Pico uh, up into sixth, Pinto up into fifth at this stage of the race with seven laps to go we're going to be getting to the six laps to go mark at the line and uh, well people are starting to make their moves this is what you talked about arjuna isn't it we we had that sort of lull that little bit of a, a calm period but now people are starting to turn up the wick and, and trying to make their moves for their final points yeah, look at Maciejewski trying to just bridge himself past Gustavo Ariel, who may have just eaten too much life into the tire in the early charge that he had in this race. Uh, again, it's one of those things where you do so much practice at this level. We often talk about the tens of hours. Some drivers put 70 hours of practice in for a single race round, but it comes down to instincts, the judgment when to go for it. Joe goes for the move for the lead. Campbell switches back underneath, and with the drive off the corner, they're going to be neck and neck into the braking zone. Johan Hart's watching all of this and going, this is great for me. I don't have to push too hard. Yep, he can just relax that little bit. Job to the outside. 
Can he get the move completed? They're still going to be absolutely neck and neck as they come to the two left-handers. And Sebastian Job is in the best place to be right now to the inside of not just this corner, but the next corner. Zach Campbell's going to have to just uh, back out of that one for the time being. And that means Sebastian Job to the head of the field. But we've been hearing that's not necessarily the place that you want to be for too long. And straight away, Job trying to break the draft. Yeah, but now five to go at the line. Will everyone just acknowledge that Sebastian Job is at the head of the field? And at this point in time, does he have too much for them? Always interesting just to watch with Sebastian how much that wheel is moving. Because if you're not familiar with Sebastian, he's got his force feedback turned up basically to the max. He is really being put through the ringer. And you can just see it bouncing off the curbs, the snap back over to the left for a moment there. Three tenths clear out of turn one. What's the margin going to be into the braking zone? Yeah, he's, he's trying to uh, get that gap straight away. And Yuan Half is trying to make some moves on Zach Campbell as well into the braking zone. Mm, Campbell's gone deep. That allows Half into second place. And you can see a little shake of the head from Zach Campbell. He's not happy with that. This is allowing Sebastian Job to pull away while these two are squabbling. And meanwhile, behind them, Sam Keita and Diogo Pinto are neck and neck as well. So Pinto, the driver in second place in the championship, moves up to fourth in this race. Yeah, of course, the two teammates in those red line cars. I've heard Max Verstappen's watching on on the Team Red Line Twitch stream, so I can only imagine uh, the level of excitement that they may be having over there. If you're, if you're, if you're Coita and Pinto, you've got to recognize five to go. If Pinto's really fast enough to go and challenge for the lead, you don't have time to now pass Campbell and half and then catch up to Sebastian Job. This next lap by, if Pinto wants the chance to catch back up to the lead, he's got to get the elbows out. And he's got two cars in front of him that, Paul, you and I, we've kind of been wondering at what point are they going to stop falling off because they've been struggling over points of this main race. And look at that, Job, straight away, trying to... Just trying to break the draft, trying to do everything he can to pull away at the front of the field. We've been seeing all the way through the season how Sebastian is able to, to manage a race and able to, to push on when the time is right. Remember, this season so far, Sebastian Job, main race wins at Daytona and Hockenheim. He's had two sprint race wins as well at Hockenheim and Le Mans. So he knows what it takes to win a race, a main race win. Sebastian Job has the most on the grid, 15 of them to his name. But Johan Half is on a charge for the lead and also on the charge. Here comes Pinto. Is he going to be able to outbreak Zach Campbell? He keeps him very tight to the apex and now on power down. Campbell clear eventually, but that margin opens up in front and Campbell goes defensive. Gap's going to just grow. Three to go this time by. Is it between Sebastian Job and Johan Haar? If so, Sebastian Job's got a championship on the line. Johan Haar does not have a championship to be thinking about. One driver's going to be thinking aggressive. One, well, maybe thinking a little bit more conservative. Although, having said that, Johan Haar is fourth in the points. Let's not forget coming into this one. Yeah, Johan Haar, he's not completely out of the championship. Let's not forget. Uh, by the way, bottom of your screen, up to 11th place. That's 17. That's right, 1-7 places gained for Luke McEwen. It's been a heck of a recovery drive after a nightmare opening race in the sprint race to come through the field up into the top 10, and he's still got his sight set on Jakub Maciejewski in front. Yeah, Maciejewski, we've, keep, we've been keeping the eye on him. Hasn't really been able to get past Gustavo Ariel just yet, but again, great to see Drago Racing finally getting some results that they think that they should be on for and again great to see them being able to deliver that's the charge there from Luke McEwen and uh, let's be fair six or so of those positions gained on lap one when we saw a couple of cars out wide but there was this is presence of mind stay out of all of that keep yourself out of trouble and almost now into a top 10 spot well two and a half laps to go in this one look at those live championship points 33 as uh, Jordan Caruso moves up to fifth place, Zach Campbell, well, he's uh, not had the best of seasons this season. 128 points off of Sebastian Job, if things stay as they are. But don't count out this race. There's still plenty to see here. 
as uh, we're coming towards the end of this one then and Johan Haaf trying to follow that slipstream of Sebastian Job in front and Job has now just, just pulled away just that little bit at the front here is this the moment that uh, Haaf's tyres have finally screamed enough to come across the line then two to go here the penultimate lap Lap time, Sebastian Job was about half a tenth quicker than Johan Half on that last lap. How wide are they all running? They clearly have got some uh, leeway in the track uh, limit discussion and have some confidence that they can get away with those uh, extra little runs. That gives you a bit more speed up to turn three, though, and look how defensive Campbell's going to go. Almost blocks Pinto out of room and into the grass, but runs out of grip eventually. Off and onto the sausage curb he goes. Pinto's got third. Campbell now going to be trying to hold on, maybe, to a spot inside the top five if Pico and Coito can close as well. Yeah, absolutely. Neck and neck to Pinto. He is moving forward. Four places gained for Diogo in this race. It's looking like a good week for him getting the points that he can. But he's a little bit too far back, I think, to make any moves on Johan Half here at this stage of the race. Job has got a little bit of a comfort gap at the front, just half a second between them. But in the context of this race, that's a huge gap there at the front because it's been absolutely tight all the way through this race Arjuna uh, this has been magnificent drive though from Sebastian Job in this second race and you know I was saying in the, the the sprint race right the one thing that Sebastian will still be a little bit concerned about and behind the scenes they will be thinking about where is this qualifying drop off in performance gone from three poles in a row to start off the season to what was it uh, like ninth at Watkins Glen 11th this time by that's not where Job expects to be and you can't rely on drives like this we're going to Imola next time Paul you're not passing this many people. Luke McEwen's not getting 17 places at Imola. Otherwise, no. everyone else has crashed. No, absolutely not. Job is 7 tenths clear. He just needs to keep it on the grey stuff. But half has got to be wary of the car behind Diogo Pinto because Pinto is on an absolute charge towards the end of this race. He's pushing on to the end here. As, well, the top six, top seven are pretty much as there were, although... Cooper Webster is quite close to uh, Jordan Caruso towards the end of this race uh, at the uh, bottom of the top eight, top eight. In fact, Webster is going to go side by side with Caruso here at the end of the race. There's half. There is Pinto. Diogo Pinto, second in the championship coming into this week. He wants some good points here to try and keep that championship charge to Sebastian Job and he's looking to the inside half a very late defense maybe not quite soon enough but at the front it's Sebastian Job through the final couple of corners he's gonna take the race win here and Sebastian Job is a race winner once again three times this season in the main races across the line who's gonna take it so it's Pinto Pinto just gets second place and look at the joy look at the delight on his face the five places gained for Pinto half is gonna have to go for third I think you could tell some relief for Pinto there as well he was clearly practicing a lot for this round felt confident felt like he was quick and uh, second place for him after a uh, second place finish in the first race as well. I think he'll be very, very happy with the performance that he put together. Yeah, certainly drivers driving down on their cool down lap. They have had one heck of a stressful evening for them here today. And we will go into uh, the Buzz Post Race Show in just a few moments time. In fact, it will do it right now. Let's have a look then at the replay of how that happened for Diogo Pinto over Johan Half. It was a, an aggressive defensive move by Half, but it just wasn't enough. Yeah, you know, they'd say make one move, make it early. Half decided which way to go. And then it's going to be on track limits, right, where Half's able to run wide and give Pinto the chance to still get through the corner pretty quickly. Through the final corner, it was already done at that point. I don't think Pinto ever really was worried about Half dragging him back to the line. I mean, what a sequence. And Paul, it goes back to what we were talking about. Racecraft at a track like this, so important.
certainly is one driver who is delighted the championship leader sebastian job after not having the best of rounds last time at watkins Glen for that mid-season tournament he's back to winning ways he takes the win by one and a half seconds over diogo pinto johan half finish off the podium with zach campbell alessandra beaker sam kaiser cooper webster gustavo ariel Jordan Caruso down to ninth in the end, ahead of Jakub Maciejewski, only just ahead of Jakub Maciejewski in the end in 10th. 11th place then for Luke McEwen here in this one after a great recovery drive. 17 places gained for him over Marina Sarika. Josh Thompson ahead of Alejandro Sanchez, who was his sprint race winner. Not a good day uh, in the main race for him. Parker White ahead of Dino Lombardi with Kevin Nielsen, Luca Kita, Oscar Irine and Simone Maria Marcheno in the top 20. Matti Sipola, Salva Talens, Michael Gianni and Oscar Pai ahead of Julian Sonin, the last of the point scorers and then those that did not finish. Lasse Bat, Matthias Stuckbeck, Bryn Collins and Chris Lullum. And well, we get to speak to our race winner, our juniors standing by. Sebastian Job qualifying in 11th. Seb, I don't think that's necessarily what you thought you'd start today off with, right? No. Uh, yeah, what a disaster. Um, this was actually by far my fastest track of the season in qualifying. I have like, I was so much quicker hit than any other track. Um, and it's been my worst quality. It was just, I think uh, I had too high expectations, perhaps. Um, and I took it a little bit easy on the tire warming. Uh, just under pressure and I didn't get the grip from the tire. Uh, messed up turn one and from that the uh, the tires were gone, the lap was ruined uh, and it was just trying to finish as high up as I could and that was 11th place which was yeah not good enough but um, luckily recovered up to I think 6th, um, started 3rd and managed to fight hard for the win and I could really show my pace right at the end there. Uh, kind of breaking away from Johan so that was that was nice to be able to show the pace I had but a very disappointing uh quali uh yeah just lucky that I could still get a win out of it yeah I, I apologize for starting off with the negative but I just had to ask because I was really curious about it let's talk about the positives though uh of course like you said worked your way into the decent points into that top eight invert mix and then the victory coming out in this main race how tense were those battles, though? Because it did look like draft was plenty significant, and the way that you were able to make dives and defend a lot of the time, there were some late moves into breaking zones. Yeah, I, to be honest, if this was round one of the season or if I had a bigger lead in the championship, I would have been a lot more aggressive. But I, I, I pushed. it's hard to trust other people in this series when uh, I think there was some internet issues and also previous crashes in previous rounds. So... I was uh, unbelievably careful at times, and I think it cost me at the starts. Uh, both both starts, I lost a place. Uh, just really not able to put the commitment that I want. Uh, but once things calmed down, I could have the pace to really fight forward. Um, and yeah, then it wasn't too bad. Well, congratulations, Seb, on another victory. We'll make our way down, though, to the second step of the podium from the Oracle Red Bull Sim Racing driver over to Team Redline's Diogo Pinto, who was very, very happy at the end of the main race. Diogo, two second place finishes. Feel confident with the with the performance you put on today? Yeah, it was an excellent event uh, once again. Pace was good. I was not expecting to be this strong, but yeah, just performed under pressure. That's what matters. And once again, Sebi also as well up there. We have uh, Sam, Cooper, Gustavo, so strong race for the team. Yeah, let's talk about the move to get past Johan. How how were you feeling going into the final couple of corners and sending it like that? Yeah, I know we practiced that move in prep. I know if I have the inside there, the guy on the outside is totally disadvantaged, especially on worn tires. So I knew it was a safe move. And Johan is, well, I didn't see him make any unpredictable moves in the race. So I figured I, I was pretty safe to send him there. And yeah, it worked out nicely for me. Uh, Diogo, we have lots of Portuguese fans on our Porsche Twitch. Uh, do you want to say something in your native Portuguese for all of them watching and cheering you on? Não, obrigado pelo apoio. Toda a gente está a ver corrida e continuar a somar pontos. Congratulations, Diogo, on a great event. We'll see you next time out, and we'll make our way down to the final step of the podium to round out our post-race coverage with Johan Haar. Through Johan, great run up front. Tires started to go off. Third at the end. Still happy with that? Yeah, obviously pretty happy with the P3, first podium of the season.
So, yeah, I'll take it. Tyrus did go at the end and had another issue. I may or may not have run out of fuel <laughs> coming to the last lap. So, yeah, a little bit of a situation to manage on the last lap, but I only lost one position, so could have been way worse. I'm glad to hear that even the best have issues with fuel management and fuel calculations. Johan, one thing that kind of surprised me is that you've had a quiet season, I think, in a lot of ways. Stayed out of trouble, came into this one fourth in points. How have you been feeling through 2024 so far? I'm pretty good. Like, I'm at the point now where I can just set a lap that I'm like, ah, there was a lot more in it. And all of a sudden I'm P5 on the grid. So, yeah, I guess experience is starting to talk. Yeah, and you're obviously at the Apex Racing Team facility. You've been splitting yep. your time uh, it between. Wasn't France. Planned, <laughs> it wasn't planned at all. It wasn't planned. You've been splitting your time. Uh, we have a lot of French fans cheering you on in our Porsche Twitch chat on the iRacing Esports Network. Could you say yeah, something yeah. in French for those cheering you on? Bah, déjà merci, merci à tout le monde de venir sur le live. Ça fait ça fait plaisir de voir autant de monde. Et puis on va essayer sur les deux dernières rondes de de vous donner une victoire française. Ah. Uh, Je parle un petit peu de français, but not enough to understand that. Congratulations, Johan, on third, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks' time. See you, Nguyen. It's a lot better than my French. It's non-existent for me. Uh, let's have a look, then, at how things stand, then, at this stage of the championship, because it's an important part of the championship. 25 points separate Diogo Pinto and Sebastian Job at the top of the standings. Luke McEwen, 92 points back from the championship leader. We've only got two more rounds to go. 85 points maximum for the next round. And then at the uh, at the end of the season, we have two main race rounds to give us uh, some big points. Is it going to be just those three at the front that are going to be fighting for the championship in your opinion? Look, at this point, with the way drivers have been consistent, yes. At this point, it's down to the top three realistically. But we know that anything can change in a series as unpredictable as this. The fact that we're going to pay out double main points in the final round of the championship, which means instead of 85, the race win in that first race goes from 25 to 50. Double the points. Pull that significant when you look at the margin between the top two. 22 points. Well, in two weeks' time, we head to Imola, and we will stay in Italy for two weeks back-to-back. -back. The final two rounds of the 2024 Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup take us to Imola, which is in two weeks' time, and then in three weeks' time, Monza for that championship finale. You do not want to miss all of that. Well, I'm afraid that is all that we have got time for here today. Paul Smith and Arjuna Kankapati have been on the commentary, the production team behind the scenes from Porsche, from everybody competing, even our all-stars. Thank you, everybody watching this broadcast. We'll see you in two weeks' time at Imola. Goodbye.